energy density in the magnetic field is equal to energy density is the magnetic field is equal to half into b into h where b is equal to mu into h so therefore if you replace h by b by mu we are going to get b square half into b square by mu so this is called as the, the energy density in a magnetic field is equal to half into b into h or simply half b square by mu the energy density in a magnetic field is equal to half into b into h is equal to half b square by mu so the, the energy density in a magnetic field is equal to half into b into h is equal to half b square by mu so this is the the energy density in a magnetic field so this is the formula of the energy density in a magnetic field is equal to half into b into h is equal to half b square by mu so b is equal to mu into h so therefore this is called as the energy density in a magnetic field the energy density in a magnetic field is equal to half into b into h is equal to half b square by mu so b is equal to mu into h the main purpose of permanent magnetic motors are to be are to avoid need for field supply the main purpose of permanent magnetic motors are to avoid the need for field supply because as we are going to use the permanent magnets so we don't need any electromagnets if you want electromagnets definitely on a pole you have to move the winding and then you have to give the supply so as we are going to use the permanent magnets we don't need the field winding and we don't need the field supply also so therefore the main purpose of permanent magnets motors are to avoid the need for field supply so therefore the main purpose of permanent magnetic motors are to avoid the need for field supply an additional condition for parallel operation of three phase transformers over single phase transformer is that they should belongs to same vector group i have already told you the main additional the main additional condition for a parallel operation of three phase transformers over single phase transformers is that they should belong to same vector group means same phase sequence and same phase shape this if suppose it's one example star delta plus 30 the other transformer should be also with the same thing star delta plus 30 so they belong to same phase sequence and also they should, they should have the same phase shift then only the parallel operation is possible so therefore an addition an additional condition for parallel operation of three phase transformers over single phase transformers is that they should belong to the same vector group see machine interpolators are used to neutralize the effect of the armature reaction in the interpolar region in dc machine the interpolators are used to neutralize the effect of the armature reaction in the interpolar region or definitely we can also say that here they are going to remove the the reactance voltage also they are going to neutralize the reactance voltage also or simply we can also say that in a dc machine intervals are used to neutralize the effect of the armature reaction in the interpolar region so in a dc machine the intervals are used to neutralize the effect of the armature reaction in the interpolar region in large ac generator supplying power to an infinite bus as a sudden short circuit occurring at its terminals assuming the primary input and the voltage behind the transient reactance to remain constant immediately after the fault accelerating of the generator rotor is inversely proportional to the moment of inertia of the machine so i want to tell you one important point a large ac generator supplying power to an infinite bus has a sudden short circuit occurring at its terminal assuming the primary input and the voltage behind the transient reactance to remain constant immediately after the fault acceleration of generator rotor is inversely proportional to the moment of inertia of the machine because the acceleration the alpha is always inversely proportional to moment of inertia which is 1 by m so always the acceleration of the the acceleration of generator rotor is inversely proportional to the moment of inertia of the machine so always the acceleration always the acceleration of generator rotor is inversely proportional to the moment of inertia of the machine so this is a very very important point that you always need to keep in mind so a large ac generator supplying power to an infinite bus has a sudden as a sudden short circuit occurring at its terminals assuming the primary input and the voltage behind the transient reactance to remain constant immediately after the fault acceleration of generator rotor is inversely proportional to the moment of inertia of the machine so therefore a large ac generator supplying power to an infinite bus has a sudden short circuit occurring at its terminals assuming the primary input and the voltage behind the transient reactance to remain constant immediately after the fault the acceleration of, of the generator rotor is inversely proportional to the moment of inertia of the machine means alpha is always inversely proportional to moment of inertia of the machine in a dc generator the windings of interpolators are connected in series with the armature winding and they create a pole of same polarity as the main pole aim in the direction of rotation of the generator i want you to this important point so therefore in a dc generator the windings of interpolators are connected in series with the armature winding and they are going to create a pole of the same polarity as the main pole ahead in the direction of rotation of the generator this concept i want you to you in detail regarding the dc generator also so therefore i want you to you in a dc generator the mn is going to rotate in the same direction as the rotation of the generator and also 
here what are the polarity what are the polarity of the interpole is the same polarity as the we can say a main pole ahead in the direction of rotation these things also i already told you in a very detailed manner so therefore simply we can say that in a disc generator the windings of interpoles are connected in series with the armature winding key and it and it's creating a pole of the same polarity as the main pole ahead in the direction of rotation of the disc generator so when the current through the coil of an electromagnet reverses the direction of the magnetic field reverses so when the current through the coil of an electromagnet reverses the direction of the magnetic field is a reverses suppose if you take a, a iron bar on the top and going to hold a coil and if i supply the current in one direction if you if you keep your right hand uh, if you keep if you curl your right hand fingers in the direction of the current the thumb is going to give you the flux direction if you reverse the current direction the flux is also going to get reverse so therefore when the current through the coil of an electromagnet reverses the direction of the magnetic field reverses so when the current through the coil of an electromagnet reverses the direction of the magnetic field will reverses so this is a very important point so when the current of the coil of an electromagnet reverses the, the direction of the magnetic field also will reverses so silicon steel has the very least its resist loop area and all it told this important point which is the silicon steel silicon steel has the very least its resist loop area because of this reason only we are going to use the silicon steel to make the to make the transformer core and all you told you because steel having the high permeability it has the high permeability and good conductivity but it doesn't want the conductivity of the of the core because it is going to give you huge amount of heat current losses so because of that we have to decrease the conductivity of the steel by adding the silicon of 3 to 4 percentage if we add the silicon of 3 to 4 percentage then definitely we are going to increase the resistivity or simply we are going to decrease the conductivity of the steel so therefore its resistance increases so heat current loss are going to get decrease so only 3 to 4 percentage of silicon is required but if you add more than that the steel is going to become more brittle means it can be easily broken that is the reason always we have to add a silicon of only 3 to 4 percentage so that for the permeability value will be same but only thing is we are going to increase the resistivity so the current loss is less so and also the silicon steel has the very less very least stress loop area so stress loss are also very less so this is the beautiness of the silicon steel so silicon steel has the least stress loop area a friction breaking is not suitable for motors see friction breaking is suppose you are going on a bike and you want to stop the this uh, bike with the help of your legs by keeping on the ground it is impossible it is possible but it is not a always the right way of stopping the motors because it is a very severe pain in the legs so therefore we can say so friction breaking is, is it is not a suitable for 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 breaking of motors so friction breaking is not suitable for motors so we have to choose some other means a uh, very electromagnetic ways electromagnetic methods by which we can stop the motors but not with the help of friction breaking so friction breaking is not suitable for motors it is not a suitable idea of breaking the or breaking the motors or stopping the motors the no load primary current is 3 to 5 percent of full load primary current of a transformer i have already told you the no load primary current is 3 to 5 percent of the full load primary current of a transformer so therefore the no load primary current is 3 to 5 percent of the full load primary current of a transformer whereas for the single phase induction motor it is 30 to 50 percentage it is very very high so therefore we can say the no load current of a is induction motor is always higher when compared to the no load current of a transformer because in a trans in a induction motor there is air gap so therefore air gap is more reluctance it has more reluctance so we need more amount of current to provide the constant flux so always the no load primary current is 3 to 5 percentage of the full load primary current of a transformer suppose there are three lamps 40 watt 100 watt 60 watt to realize the full rated power of the lamps they are connected in parallel only so if you cut in a series then definitely out of this only the lower lower rating bulbs grows higher but not the remaining things if you want to make them work in their full capacity then definitely you have to connect them in the parallel combination only then only they can work with their full rated capacity so these are the three lamps 40 watt 100 watt 60 watt to less the full rated power of the lamps they are connected in parallel then this bulb can glow with 40 watt this bulb can glow with 100 watt and this bulb can glow with 60 watt fully so therefore simply we can say that there are three lamps of 40 watt 100 watt and 60 watt to realize the full rated power of the lamps they are connected in parallel only in a series only the lower rating bulbs always glows the higher 
flux in the transformer occurs because iron core has a high permeability. See, leakage flux I already told you. Leakage flux means whenever I already told you the iron core has, has the huge amount of permeability. So iron core has huge amount of huge amount of permeability means simply I can say that its reluctance is very less. So always the flux will try to move in those directions where the reluctance is less. As the iron core has less amount of reluctance, so the flux will try to move only in the in the in the core, in the iron core only. But, but even though a small amount of leakage flux is going to get occur, means the flux which is linking with its own coil is called as a leakage flux. Whereas the mutual flux is the flux which is linking both the coils is called as the mutual flux. So the leakage flux in the transformer occurs because iron core has the high permeability. So the flux linking with its own coil is called as the leakage flux. And the flux linking with the both coils is called as the mutual flux or the useful flux. Only because of this mutual flux, the power is transferring from one electrical medium to other electrical medium medium by a magnetic medium. The primary and secondary values of a transformer are wound on the top of each other in order to reduce the leakage flux. I have already told you, always you have to wound the primary and the secondary windings. We have to wound one after the another because because of this only the leakage flux is less because the flux is always going to link both the coils, both the coils. So therefore the leakage flux is less here. Means we can get most of the useful flux. So primary and secondary windings of a transformer are wound on the top of each other to reduce the leakage flux. The reactive power generated by a synchronous alternator can be controlled by changing the terminal voltage. I will already tell you very important point. The reactive power generated by a synchronous alternator can be controlled by changing the terminal voltage or simply we can say that by changing the EF value. See, see, basically I will already tell you how we are going to change, how we are going to change the reactive power. Reactive power is only changed with the help of excitation. If excitation is changed, EF is changed. If EF is changed, then terminal voltage is also changed. So therefore, the reactive power generated by a synchronous alternator can be controlled by changing the terminal voltage. Or we can say, IF is going to control the, IF is going to control the EF and EF is going to control the terminal voltage. So by this, we can control the reactive power which is required. DC shunt motor used in smallness. I have already told you, DC shunt motor has a constant speed from low to full load, full load condition. The change of speed is very less. Or simply we can say it, it is really a constant speed motor. So it is used on the small large machines. Two value capacitor motor is preferred for tape recorders. So two value capacitor is nothing but it's a capacitor run and cap it's a capacitor start and capacitor run. It is also called a two value capacitor motor. It is preferred for the tape recorders. So two value capacitor is also called as the capacitor run and capacitor capacitor start and capacitor run. It is preferred for the tape recorders. Starting winding in a single phase induction motor is to produce the rotating flux in conjunction with the main winding. I have already told you a pure single phase induction motor is a not a self starting because even at the rotor speed is equal to zero. At the starting condition, the MR is equal to zero and the starting torque is also zero. So it will never produce a torque. It will never rotate. So what you have to do? Now you have to connect an auxiliary winding or start, starting winding in parallel with the main winding. So because of this, now there are two currents which is called as the main winding current and the starting winding current. When these two currents are going to get interact, there is a flux, the rotating flux is going to get produced. So now we can say that that the starting torque is going to get obtained. So therefore, here yeah, simply we can say that the purpose of starting winding in a single phase induction motor is to produce the rotating flux in conjunction with the main winding. So therefore, when these two currents are going to get interact, then there, there is a possibility of starting torque, which is non-zero in nature. So therefore, the, the purpose of starting winding in a single phase induction motor is to produce the rotating flux in conjunction with the main winding. The speed of DC motor reduces slightly with increase in load. I have already told you, DC shunt motor is always a constant speed motor. From low to full load, the amount of change in speed is very, very less value. So because of this only, it is called as the, it's a constant or speed motor. So therefore, the speed of DC shunt motor reduces slightly with increase in load. Universal motors are basically used in the mixers. So I have told you, in the mixes, we are going to use the universal motors. Universal motors are also called as the, it is basically a series motor, which can be used for both AC and DC supply. So if, if you give a DC supply, there will be a constant torque, but if you give a AC supply, you are going to get a pulsating torque. So simply this, this, this series motor or series motor can be applied for both AC and DC supply. So it is called as universal motor and it makes a huge amount of noise because if you if you grind a mixing, if you, if you turn on the mixing, you can use a huge amount of noise because they are, they are very noisy operations. So universal motors are very noisy mixers or noisy motors. So TA versus IA graph of a DC series motor is a parable up to a full load and a straight line at, at the overload. I have already told you up to rate of load, up to rate of load, the graph between TA and IA is nothing but a parabola, but after that it is a straight line. 
from passing through origin and what we told you this thing with duty and manner. So, this is the first model as the highest starting that regarding when compared to any other model in the world. And uh, the DC, DC motors, DC, DC motors have the excellent speed control characteristics than any other motors. So, therefore, whatever the DC series motor, that block between the T and IA is a parable up to a full load, but after that it is a straight line passing through origin. Synchronous motor is a non-self-starting motor. I am already told you, single phase induction motor is a non-self-starting motor and a three phase synchronous motor is also non-self-starting motor. Listen carefully, single phase induction motor is also non-self-starting motor and a three phase synchronous motor is also a non-self-starting motor. I have already told you how to start the, so if you want to do the starting of single phase induction motor, we have to add the auxiliary winding. But in the three phase synchronous motor, if you want to give a starting torque, we have two methods. I have already told you the first one is keep the extra motor or the second one is go for the damping winding, so damper windings. So by these two methods, we can produce the starting torque. Now, let me discuss some facts about the shared point motor. The shared point motor, its direction rotation is from shared portion of poles to the unshared portion of poles. See, now we will discuss some facts about the shared point motor. I have already told you, its direction of, its direction of rotation is from unshared portion of poles to the shared portion of poles. This point I have already told you, which is here, always the direction of, the direction of rotation of the shared point motor is always from unshared portion of the poles to the shared, shared portion of the poles. Its efficiency is very very poor. It has a very low power factor. It, it has the high starting torque. It has actually a less starting torque. It is not high, it is a, it is not, it doesn't have any high starting torque. It has a less starting torque. So, it has less starting torque and the low rotor current is equal to full load, full load current. So, these are some of the important facts of the shared bone motor. The direction of rotation is from the unshaded portion of the poles to the shaded portion of the poles. It's a, it has a very poor efficiency, it has very low power factor, it has a less starting torque and the long rotor current is equal to full load current. So these are some of the characteristics of this shaded pole motor. Always its direction of rotation is from the unshaded portion of poles to the shaded portion of the poles. It has very poor power factor, it has a very poor power factor and less power and, and it has less efficiency and less power factor it has less starting torque and the log rotor current is equal to the full load current so these are some of the important points regarding the shaded pole motor the efficiency of a power transformer at relatively light load quite low there is this is due to high fixed losses in the conversion to output the efficiency of a power transformer at relatively light load is quite low this is due to high fixed log i fixed losses in conversion to output i already told you the efficiency of a power transformer is very less at light load conditions. This is because the fixed losses are very higher when compared to output power. So the efficiency of a power transformer is very less at light load conditions because the fixed losses are very higher in comparison to the output power. So the efficiency of a power transformer at a relatively light load conditions is very low because due to high fixed losses in comparison to the output power. So this is a very important point. So therefore, the efficiency of a power transformer at a light load conditions is very, very less because it has a huge amount of fixed losses when compared to the output power. So therefore, the efficiency of a power transformer at relatively light load is quite low. This is due to the high fixed losses in a comparison to the output. The efficiency of a power transformer at relatively light load is quite low because this is due to high fixed losses in comparison to output. In an electromechanical energy conversion device, the developed torque depends upon the stator field, rotor field strength and the torque angle. I have already told you the torque is directly proportional to the stator field, rotor field and the torque angle. So, in an electromechanical energy conversion device, the developed torque depends upon the stator field and the rotor field strength and the torque angle. So, therefore, torque is directly proportional to stator flux into rotor flux into sine of delta, but delta is the load angle between the Fire and fire. It's a very important point. Delta is the load angle between the fire and the fire. So, del so delta is the it is the angle between the fire and fire. So this is a very important point. So therefore, in an electromechanical energy conversion device, the developed torque depends upon the stator field and the rotor field strength and a torque angle. Torque angle is delta. It is the angle between the fire and fire. So during short circuit test, the collapse are negligible. So because voltage applied across the high voltage side is a fraction of its needed voltage so it is the so this is the mutual flux see i already told you during short circuit test so during the short short circuit test the core loss are very negligible because only we are going to consider only the copper losses but not the core losses because the voltage applied across the high voltage side is a fraction of its rated voltage 
so it's a it's a very fraction of its its rate of voltage so and this is the mutual flux so i want to tell you one important point during the short circuit test of a transformer so what are the losses is nearly equal to copper losses but not core losses because here in a short circuit test so we are going to give supply to the hu winding and we are going to short circuit at the lv winding so in hu winding we are going to get voltage is high the current is less the the rated current is very less here so therefore we give supply to the hu winding and we give short circuit to the lv winding so therefore we can say that whatever the current which is required the rated current you are going to get only at a very small fraction of the rated voltage as the voltage itself is very less the core is also very less because the core loss is a function of the sub, uh, applied voltage as the applied voltage is very less the core loss is also very less so we are going to neglect it so what are the losses is nearly equal to the copper losses so during short circuit test the core losses are negligible because the voltage applied across the i voltage side is a fraction of its rated voltage and so is the mutual flux So the power factor of a transformer on no load is poor due to magnetizing reactance of the transformer is very higher. I have already told you the power factor of a transformer on no load condition is very very poor because the magnetizing reactance or you can say the magnetizing reactance current is very higher. So magnetizing reactance current is very higher. So because of that the I M or we can say I M is very greater than I C. So because of this the power factor angle is very high. So power factor is less. So therefore, simply we can say that the power factor of a transformer on no load condition is poor due to magnetizing reactance of the transformer. Or simply, if we compare the power factor of induction motor and also three phase induction motor and the single phase transformer, the power factor of the induction motor is very lesser when compared to power factor of the transformer at no load condition. Two winding, the two windings provided on the stator of a single phase induction motor, one main winding. And the other is called as auxiliary winding, are connected through inductive coupling. So two windings are going to provide on the stator of a single phase induction motor. One is called as a main winding, and the other is called as auxiliary winding, and they are basically connected by a inductive coupling. So therefore, here we are going to use the uh, this auxiliary winding only for the starting purpose. So whenever the rotor has achieved some speed. After that, we are going to remove this auxiliary winding with the help of the centrifugal switch. Centrifugal switch is basically a speed sensitive centrifugal switch. So, based on the speed, it is going to get activated. So, therefore, two windings provided on the stator of a single phase induction motor. One is called as the main winding, and the other is called as the auxiliary winding, and they are going to connect through the inductive coupling. So, small air gap in a power phase induction motor helps to reduce the magnetizing current. So. The small air gap means we need less amount of magnetizing current. So more is the air gap means we need more amount of magnetizing current to produce the flux. So simply we can say that a small air gap in a polyphase induction motor is going to help to reduce the magnetizing current. So a small amount of air gap, a small air gap in a polyphase induction motor helps to reduce the magnetizing current. So lesser air gap is going to give you less amount of magnetizing current. More air gap means we need quite more amount of magnetizing current to produce the flux in a Polyphase induction motor. The rotor of a three-phase induction motor rotates in the same direction as that of the stator rotating field. This can be explained by the Lenz law, which opposes the cost for using it. I have already told you the rotor of a three-phase induction motor is going to rotate in the same direction as that of the stator rotating field. This can be explained with the help of the Lenz law, which is going to oppose the cost for using it. Always Lenz law, Lenz law will tell you that which is always the effect is going to oppose the cost. The rotor of a three-phase induction motor is going to rotate in the same direction as that of the stator rotating field. This can be explained by the Lenz law, which is going to tell you that the always the cost is going to oppose the, or simply we can say the effect is always going to oppose the cost. It is producing it. So therefore, the rotor of a three-phase induction motor rotates in the same direction as that of the stator rotating field. This can be explained by the Lenz law, which opposes the cost producing it. Synchronous reactance is the combined reactance due to leakage flux and the armature reaction, which is X is equal to X A plus X L. I already told you X is equal to X A plus X L. So X is equal to the synchronous reactance and X A is equal to the the reactance because of the armature reaction and X L is equal to the reactance due to leakage flux. So this is a very important point that I already told you. So X is always equal to X A plus X L. X is equal to the synchronous reactance and X A is equal to the The reactors due to armature reaction and XL is called as the reactors due to leakage flux. So always synchronous reactors is the summation of the reactors due to armature reaction and the reactors due to leakage flux. The transfer stability of a power system can be increased by series capacitor. So if you go for series capacitor, 
then we can say the transistivity of the power system can be increased. So if we add a series capacitor, the amount of maximum power can also be increased. So transistivity studies is only for the first cycle, for the first swing cycle. So whatever the study which we do for the first swing cycle in a power system, it is called as the, it is called as the, basically, the transistivity studies. So the studies which are going to yield only for the first swing cycle in a power system are called as the transistivity studies and the transistivity of the power system can be increased by the series capacitor. So with the help of series capacitor, we can even increase the maximum power which is going through the line. A distribution, the a distribution transformer of rating 11 kV to 400 volt 3 phase is usually a delta star. See whatever the things that you are going to near your home. So near your home, there is a, there is a transformer which is called as a distribution transformer. Its rating is 11 kV to 400 volt. So therefore, if it is a 3 phase, it is basically a delta star connected. So whatever the transformer that you can see near, near your hometown, it is called a distribution transformer. Its rating is 11 kV to 400 volt. It is a 3 phase transformer. It is a basically its connection is delta to star type. So therefore, I can say that a distribution transformer of rating 11 kV to 400 volt 3 phase it is basically delta star connected capacitor. So it's a delta star configuration. So a distribution transformer of rating 11 kV to 400 volt 3 phase is usually a delta star connected transformer. So what are the transformer that you are going to see near your home? It has a rating of 11 kV to 400 volt. It is basically a three phase transformer. Its connection is basically delta to star. So primary is the delta and the secondary is star. So therefore, this is the way that you always have to keep remembering. So a distribution transformer of rating 11 kV to 400 volt 3 phase is usually a delta star. The transformer, a transformer operates 24 hours a day at full load. Its full load efficiency is equal to all day efficiency. See, whenever a transformer operates 24 hours a day at full load, its full load efficiency is equal to all day efficiency. So this is the very important point. Only if the transformer is going to operate 24 hours at the full load, but practically this is not the case. So then we can say that for practical cases, the full load efficiency is always less than all the efficiency. But but if you but if you see this uh, special case, which is a transformer operates 24 hours a day at full load, then its full load efficiency is equal to the all day efficiency. Only when the transformer is operating 24 hours a day at full load, then we can say the full load efficiency is equal to all day efficiency. Two three phase transformers cannot be operated in parallel if their phase sequence is different. I already told you here. If you want to operate the two three phase transformers in parallel, they should have same phase sequence and they should have even same phase shift. Phase sequence means example star delta and the phase shift means plus 30. So for a small example. So therefore, here if you want to go for the parallel operation of transformers, they should belong to have the same phase sequence and also same phase shift. If this is the case, then generally we can go for the parallel operation of the transformers. Otherwise, you don't have to go for the parallel operation of transformers. So two three phase transformers cannot be operated in parallel if their phase sequence is different. The space distribution of MMF produced by armature winding is triangular with its peak value along the quadrature or the bridge axis which is 90 degrees for 90 degree away from the main field axis. I have already told this important point which is the space distribution, the space, the space distribution of MMF produced by armature winding is a triangular with its peak value along the quadrature or the brush axis for 90 degree away from the main field axis. These things I have already shown in the each and everything I have already told in the graph of the DC machines concept only. So the space the space the space distribution of MMF produced by armature landing is a triangle with its peak value along the quadrature of the brush axis uh, for 90 degree away from the main field axis. The, the space the space distribution of MMF produced by armature winding is a triangle with its peak value along the quadrature of brush axis for 90 degrees away from the main field axis. The flat compound characteristics may be obtained from a DC compound generator by connecting a variable resistance in parallel with the series field winding. The flat compound characteristics may be obtained from a DC compound generator by connecting a variable resistance in parallel with the series field winding. The flat compound characteristics may be obtained from a DC compound generator by connecting a variable resistance in parallel with the series field winding. The flat compound characteristics may be obtained from a DC compound generator by connecting a variable resistance in parallel with the series field winding. So for this, see DC compound generator, if you connect a variable resistance in parallel with the series field winding, then you are going to get a flat compound characteristics. So therefore, the flat compound characteristics that you are going to get for DC compound generator 
by correcting a variable resistance in parallel with the series wheel winding. So, if you correct a variable resistance in parallel with the series wheel winding, then you can get a so, if you connect a variable resistance in parallel with the series wheel winding for a basic component generator, then you can get the flat component characteristics. So, therefore, simply you can see that the flat component characteristics may be obtained from a basic component generator by connecting a variable resistance in parallel with the series wheel binding. So, therefore, we can see that the flat component characteristics may be obtained from a basic component generator by connecting a variable resistance in parallel with the series wheel binding. So, therefore, if you connect a variable resistance in parallel with the series wheel winding, for this basic compound generator, you can get a flat compound characteristics. The SSS losses in a air core transformer is zero because here SSS loss is going to happen only when there is a core. If there is no core, SSS loss are always zero. If there is a core, definitely SSS loss are going to get occur. But if there is no core, it's simply we can see what is the air, then the SSS loss is equal to zero. All nicomatic material is used to make a permanent magnet of highest energy product. So, all nico magnetic material. So, all nico magnetic material. So, all nico magnetic material is used to make a permanent magnet of highest energy product. So, if you want to make a permanent magnet, then you have to use this all nico magnetic material because it has the highest energy product. So, if you want to, if you want to make a, a permanent magnet, the material which is required is called as the all nico magnetic material because it has the highest energy product. So, because of this reason only, we have to use this one. So, all nico magnetic material. It is basically used for making the uh, permanent magnets because it has the highest energy product. So, all nickel magnetic material is used to make a permanent magnet because it, it has the highest energy product. So, all nickel magnetic, magnetic material it, it is basically used for making the permanent magnet because it has the highest energy product. Conductive insulation is not present in auto transformers. I already told you there is no conductive insulation in the auto transformer. Whereas in the single phase transformer, the power is transferred only through induction process. Whereas in the auto transformer, the power is transferred by both conduction and also by the induction process. So there is no conductive insulation is present in the auto transformers. So damper bars are used in synchronous machine. I already told you basically we are going to use the damper bars in the synchronous machines and the rotor bars we are going to use in the induction machine and the converters are used in the DC machine. I have already told this in the detailed manner. So damper bars we are going to use in the synchronous machine and the rotor bars we are going to use in the induction machine and the converter are going to use in the DC machine. 2 of T is equal to minus N2 D phi M by DT. Where N2 is the number of tones in the secondary, phi M is the mutual flux linking the primary and the secondary. So, E2 of T is equal to minus N2 D phi M by DT. Where N2 is called the number of tones in the secondary and phi M is the mutual flux linking both the primary and the secondary coils. So, E2 of T is equal to minus N2 D phi M by DT. Where N2 is the number of tones in the secondary where phi M is the mutual flux linking primary and secondary. This magnitude value, which is the magnitude value is given by the Faraday, whereas this negative value is given by Lenz law. So, we can say this is the equation, which is the combination of both Faraday's law and also the Lenz law. So, whatever the EMI which is going to produce, it is going to oppose the cause. So, commutator and the brush arrangement in a DC motor is to produce the unidirectional torque. So, commutator and the brush arrangement in a DC motor is to produce the unidirectional torque. So, therefore, always a commutator and the brush arrangement in a DC motor is to always produce that unidirectional torque. And all I told you, we have to always use the commutator and also the brush. Because of these two only, we are going to get the torque, which is the unidirectional torque in a DC motor. So, these things are already explained in a very detailed manner in the DC machine's concept itself. So, therefore, always we need a commutator with a brush. Then only we can say that a unidirectional torque is going to get produced in the DC motor. A series generator can self-excite only if the load current is not zero. A series generator can self-excite only if the load current is not zero. See, self-excitation of DC series generator means whenever the load current is not equal to zero because in a series generator, the IL is equal to IA is equal to ISC. If IL is equal to not equal to zero means IA is not equal to zero and IC is not equal to zero. So, therefore, then only there is a possible of self-excitation. So, a series generator can self-excite only if the load current is not equal to zero. If the load current is not equal to zero means the series current is not equal to zero. So, therefore, we can go for the self-excitation of the series generator. Variation in DC excitation of synchronous motor causes variation in both armature current and also power factor. So, variation in the DC excitation of synchronous motor causes variation in both armature current also and also the power factor. I have already shown the graph between the uh, we can say the graph between the IA and the IF is called as the V curve. 
whereas the graph between the power factor and the IF is called as the inverted V graph. These things are already shown for the synchronous motor and also for the synchronous generator. These both graphs are only for both the synchronous motor and also for the synchronous generator. So we can say that whenever you vary the DC excitation of a power system of a synchronous motor, we can vary the armature current and also the power factor of the system. So the four power factor angle is nothing but it is the angle between the V and the IA for both the synchronous motor and also for the synchronous generator. So variation in DC excitation of synchronous motor causes variation in both armature current and also power factor. A shaded pole single phase induction motor can be used for personal computers as cooling fan. I have already told you a shaded pole single phase induction motor can be used for, for personal computers as a cooling fan. So you can see what are the cooling fan under your PCs. That is basically a shaded pole single phase induction motor. So a shaded pole single phase induction motor can be used for personal computers as cooling fan. So if you see a cooling fan under your PC, it is basically a shaded pole single phase induction motor. It is basically a shaded pole single phase induction motor. And what I told you, its directional rotation is always from the unshaded portion of the post to the shaded portion of force. It has very poor efficiency and it has very low power factor. It has less starting torque and the rotor and the a loud rotor current is equal to full load current. All these things I have already told you there. So therefore always the whatever the, if you see under your PC the cooling fan, it is basically it is made of shaded pole induction motor. So therefore simply we can say a shaded pole single phase induction motor can be used for the personal computers as a cooling fan. So in a synchronous motor, screw cage winding is provided for making self-starting. As I have already told you, in a synchronous motor, screw cage winding is provided for making self-starting. Screw cage winding itself is called as the damping winding. So therefore, the damper winding is basically provided in a, in a synchronous motor for, uh, for making self-starting and we can say to provide the starting torque and also for providing the, for preventing the hunting mm. or removing the hunting. These things I have already told you. So therefore, simply we can say that in a synchronous motor, screw cage winding is also called as the basically damper winding is provided for making the self-starting. The thickness of stator laminations is of the order of 0.5 mm. So, we can see that the thickness of the stator laminations. So, if you see that, the thickness of stator laminations is of the is of the order of the 0.5 mm. So, if you, see, if you go for the thickness of stator laminations, it is in the order of the 0.5 mm. So, the thickness of the stator laminations is of the order of the 0.5 mm. The, the thickness of the stator laminations is of the order of 0.5 mm. So, the thickness of the stator laminations is of the order of the 0.5 mm. The thickness of the stator laminations is of the order of the 0.5 mm. So, if you go for the stator laminations of synchro or of the rotating machines, it is basically of the 0.5 mm. The most suitable material for transformer core is cold rolled grain oriented steel. The most suitable or simply we can call it as a CRGO. CRGO means cold rolled grain oriented steel. The most suitable material for transformer core is basically CRGO, which is called as the cold rolled grain oriented steel. The most suitable material for transformer core, it is basically cold rolled grain oriented steel. See, if you make a transformer core of CRGO, it is very quite good. So, therefore, the most suitable material for transformer core is basically cold rolled grain, grain oriented steel, which is CRGO steel. Cold rolled grain oriented steel. So, in large capacity transformers, 5% of the turns at the end of HU winding are provided with extra insulation so as to provide protection due to surges occurring during switching operation. So in large capacity transformers, in large capacity transformers, 5% of the turns at the end of HU winding are provided with extra insulation so as to provide protection due to surges occurring during the switching operation. So in large capacity transformers, 5% of the turns, turns at the end of the HE winding are provided with extra insulation so as to provide the protection due to the subjects occurring during switching operation. I have already told you, suppose if you go for the large reading of transformer, large reading capacity of transformers, then definitely for the HE winding, for the 5 percentage turns of the last turns of the HE winding, we are going to provide some extra insulation because, because here during the switching operations, we are going to get lot of subjects. So, this winding should 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 basically withstand it. So therefore, for the 5 percentage turns of the HE winding, we are going to provide some extra insulation. So therefore, simply we can say that in large rating capacity transformers, 5 percentage of the turns at the end of the HE winding are provided with extra insulation so as to provide 
production due to surgeons occurring during the switching operation. So, in large capacity transformers, 5% of the tones at the end of HU winding are provided with extra insulation so as to provide protection due to surges occurring during the switching operation. In large capacity transformers, 5% of the turns at the end of the HU winding are provided with extra insulation so as to provide protection due to surges occurring during the switching operation. So, therefore, simply we can say that in large capacity transformers, 5% of the turns at the end of the HU winding are provided with extra insulation so as to provide the protection due to surges during the occurring during the switching operation. The speed of synchronous motor depends upon both supply frequency and also number of poles and all I told you in a synchronous motor NS is equal to NR is equal to 120 MYP. So it is going to depend upon supply frequency and also number of poles. The number of poles are always even number. So therefore the speed of synchronous motor depends upon the both supply frequency and also number of poles in a synchronous motor NR is equal to NS always. A synchronous machine connected to a power system grid bus bar is operated is operated as a generator to make the machine operate as a motor the mechanical input is, less, is to be lesser than the losses at the shaft. So a synchronous machine connected to a power system with bus bar is operated as a generator. To make the machine operate as a motor, the mechanical input is to be less, is to be less than the losses at the shaft. So therefore, a synchronous machine connected to a power system with bus bar is operated as, as a generator. To make the machine operate as a motor, the mechanical input is to be less than the losses of the shaft. If the mechanical input is lesser than the losses of the shaft, it is going to act like a motor. So therefore, if the mechanical input is lesser than the is the, if the mechanical input is lesser than the losses of the shaft, it is going to act like a synchronous motor. Otherwise, if the mechanical input is greater than the losses of the shaft, it is going to act like a synchronous generator. So this is a very important point. If the mechanical input is greater than the losses of the shaft, it is going to act like a synchronous generator. If the mechanical input is lesser than the losses at the shaft, it is going to act like a synchronous motor. So a synchronous machine connected to a power system with bus bar is operated as a generator. To make the machine operated as a motor, the mechanical input is to be lesser than the losses at the shaft. So if the mechanical input is greater than the losses at the shaft, it is going to act like a synchronous generator. If the mechanical input is lesser than the losses at the shaft, it is going to act like a synchronous motor. Speed of DC shaft motor beyond the rated speed can be increased by increasing the resistance in the phase circuit. The speed of DC shaft motor beyond the rated speed can be increased by increasing the resistance in the phase circuit. I have already told you the speed of DC shaft motor beyond the rated speed can be increased by increasing the field, increasing the resistance in the field circuit. So if you increase the resistance in the field circuit, the IF decreases, so field flux decreases. So, N is that about boost on to EV by 5 as 5 decreases speed increases. So, therefore, it is called the field weakening control. If you want the speed above the base speed, then we have to go for the field weakening control. Means we have to keep an extra resistance in the field circuit. So, therefore, the speed of a DC shunt motor beyond the rated speed can be increased by increasing the resistance in the field circuit. So, if we increase the resistance in the field circuit, then the IF decreases, then 5 decreases. So, therefore, speed is increasing the above rated speed or base speed. This causes basically field weakening control. The starting torque of an induction motor varies as 1 by F square. I have already told you the starting torque is nothing but which is the starting torque is equal to which is 180 by 2 pi ns into e d square r2 by r2 square plus x2 square. As you can see e d is proportional to e1, e1 is proportional to phase voltage, supply phase voltage and x is that proportional to f. So here you are going to get finally actually here you should get the equation which is 1 by f cube, it is not a f square. The starting torque of an induction motor is proportional is, 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 is proportional to 1 by f cube, not 1 by f square. The starting torque of an induction motor is a proportional to 1 by f cube, this is not square. The starting torque of an induction motor varies as proportional to 1 by f cube. So therefore the starting torque of induction motor is varies as 1 by f cube. The purpose of interpoles in DC machine is to nullify both the cross magnetizing FMF and the reactance voltage. The purpose of interpoles in a DC machine is to nullify both the cross magnetizing MMF and the reactance voltage. The purpose of interpoles in DC machine is to nullify both the cross magnetizing MMF and the reactance voltage. The purpose of interpoles in DC machine is to nullify both the cross magnetizing MMF and the reactance voltage. I have already told you here the purpose of interpoles in DC machine is to, is to nullify both the cross magnetizing MMF and also the reactance voltage. I have already told you, if you, with the help of compensating winding, we can eliminate the demagnetizing MMF. 
and with the help of interpols we are going to eliminate the cross magnetizing mmf and also the reactance voltage so with the help of compensating winding we are going to eliminate only the demagnetizing mmf whereas with the help of the the help of the with the help of interpols we can eliminate the cross magnetizing mmf and also the reactance voltage so compensating winding is going to eliminate the armature reaction and we are and this uh, interpols is going to basically improve the commutation so compensating winding is going to improve the armature reaction and uh, it is it is going to nullify the armature, armature reaction whereas the interpols are going to improve the commutation so this is a very important point here so therefore the purpose of interpols and dc machine is to nullify both the cross matrix mmf and the reactance voltage whereas the purpose of the whereas the purpose of the uh, compensating winding in dc machine is to nullify only the demagnetizing mmf so in a three phase induction motors speeds higher than signal speed can be can be had by rotor slip power control in a three phase induction motor speed higher than the signal speed can be had by rotor slip power control so with the help of this rotor slip power control we can get nr greater than ns so with the help of rotor slip power control we can get nr greater than ns in a three phase induction motor so this is a very important point that you always have to remember this concept so therefore simply i am trying to tell you which is very much useful for all the examination so therefore if you want it nr to be nr to be greater than ns in a three phase induction motor then definitely the method is called as a motor slip power control so in a three phase induction motor speeds higher than the signal speed can be can be uh, can be had with the help of motor slip power control so in a three phase induction motor speeds higher than the signal speed we can get with the help of this motor slip power control so in a three phase induction motor speeds higher than the signal speed we can get with the help of motor slip power control method so with the help of motor slip power control method we can get nr greater than ns in a three phase induction motor see when a signal motor is started the field winding is short circuited i already told you basically the c three phase signal motor is a non self starting motor it is not a self starting motor so if you want to do the starting what you have to do we have to give a supply to the stator windings and the motor the field winding you, you should short circuit them so then here as there is a rotor and there is a damping winding and also the field winding are short circuited so therefore this rotating flux is going to cut this both the windings the field winding and the damper winding so flux are going to get induced and because of this it is going to start its rotation so therefore after rotating after reaching a speed which is nr less than ns then definitely we have to open circuit this field winding and give a dc supply and then the fixed poles are the fixed poles are going to get form on this uh, on this rotor then it is going a magnetic locking is going to get occur and then it is going to get rotated so initially we have to short circuit the field winding so when a synchronous motor is started the field winding is always short circuited initially so basically it is going to initiate initially it is going to act like a induction motor but if you give a dc supply to the field winding now it is going to act like a synchronous motor so at the starting it is going to act like a induction motor but after running but after running if you give a dc supply it is going to act like a it is going to basically act like a which is called as the a synchronous motor so three phase synchronous motor need three phase dc supply as well as dc supply i will already tell you three phase synchronous motors are doubly excited motors because stators we are going to give ac supply three phase ac supply and the rotor we are going to give dc supply so therefore simply we can say it's a doubly excited machine so three phase synchronous motors need three phase ac supply as well as dc supply of the rotor so in the rotor we need dc supply and in stator we need the ac supply three phase ac supply so simply we can call it as the doubly excited machine in a capacitor start single phase induction motor the current in the starting winding is the voltage i already told you in a capacitor start single phase induction motor the current in the starting winding is going to leave the voltage because because there's a capacitor so a capacitor is a, the, the capacitor inductance is very higher than the starting winding inductance so therefore the, the, the winding is going to act like a pure capacitor so the current is going to leave the, the starting current is going to leave the supply voltage so therefore as i already told you with the help of this capacitor we are going to increase the phase angle between the starting current and the main winding current so because of this torque is derived proportional to starting current into the main winding current into sine of alpha where alpha is the phase angle between the starting current and the main winding current as alpha increases then the, the starting torque is also increases so because of this help of capacitor we are going to increase the phase angle between the starting current and also the main winding current as alpha increases the starting torque is also increases this is the beauty of the capacitor starting phase induction motor 
the function of a stator in DC machine to reduce the starting current to save values. The function of a stator in a DC machine to reduce the starting current to save values. I have already told you in a DC machines at a starting condition the rotor speed is equal to zero. And we can say that so vacuum F is equal to zero. So the current is very higher. Damage current is equal to V minus E B by R A. As E B is equal to zero, V by R A is a very huge value. It can damage the windings of the arbitrary winding of the DC machine. So now we have to use the starter. It is it is basically it is going to increase the starting resistance as the time goes on it is going to decrease its resistance so we can we can get the current in a limited safe values so in a limited region only we can get the value of the starting current so function of the state of basic machine is to reduce the starting current to safe values so during normal running conditions the armature current drawn by dc center motor is given by v minus e by r a i already told you during normal running conditions the armature current drawn by dc shunt motor is given by i is equal to v minus eb by ra because at normal running conditions as n is not equal to zero so eb is not equal to zero so then we are going to get v minus eb by ra in a dc machine the laminate parts are armature and pole shoe i have already told you here we are not going to see there is a three parts in a dc machine yoke pole pole and also armature so we are not going to laminate the yoke but we are going to laminate the pole shoe and also the armature core so therefore in a dc machine the laminated parts are armature core and also pole shoe but not the yoke the direction of the shared board single phase induction motor can be reversed by shifting all the shading coils to the other half of the pole as as i already told you suppose the direction of the direction of the shared board single phase induction motor can be reversed by shifting all the Shading coils to the other half of the pole. So therefore, I have already told you the shared board induction motor. The rotation is from the unshaded part to the shaded part. So therefore, simply we can see that as the rotation is from unshaded to shaded part, then definitely if you want to go for the reverse rotation, you have to shift the shading coils. Then we are going to reverse the rotation of the rotor of a single phase or shaded board single phase induction motor. So the, the direction of the shaded board single phase induction motor can be reversed by shifting all the shading coils to the other half of the pole. Ward Leonard method of speed control is basically a voltage control method. So Ward Leonard method of speed control is basically a voltage control method. I have already told you it is basically in the case of the DC machine. If you want to control the speed control, either in the clockwise or anti-clockwise, you can get with the help of this voltage control method. Or we can say based this on this Ward Leonard method of speed control is basically a voltage control method. So Ward Leonard method of speed control is basically a voltage control method. The purpose of providing dummy coils in a DC machine armature is to provide the mechanical balance for the motor. So, therefore, simply we can say that the purpose of the purpose of providing the dummy coils in a DC machine armature is to provide the mechanical balance for the motor. So, if you so if you want to provide the mechanical balance for the motor, then we have to use the dummy coils. I have already told you here. Sometimes you you may not take every jet. What are jet connectors? You may not take for so because of this there is the unbalance so if you want to make a balance you have to keep an extra dummy coils it is not connected to any winding just we have kept it for the balance purpose only the purpose of providing the dummy coils in a dc machine armature is to provide the mechanical balance for the motor so oil in a transformer is used for insulation and a cooling i have already told you oil in a transformer is basically used for insulation and also for cooling purpose it is going to take away water or the heat present in the windings and also it is going to take it as the insulation between the turns of the winding it is going to provide some insulation also so oil in a transformer can do two functions one is to provide the insulation and the other one is the cooling the most efficient in electrical machines are transformer because the static machine so it is more efficient so see always the static device device are most more efficient than the rotating machines so transformer is a static device so it is more efficient than all the rotating machines so simply we can say that the most efficient in the electrical machine is the transformer railway platforms are near the lowest level of illumination so if you go for the railway platform there you require very low level of illumination means the amount of light requirement is very less in case of railway platforms so railway platforms need very lowest level of illumination so railway platforms are going to need the lowest level of illumination the distance between the two coil sets which are connected to the same counter segment is called as the front pitch the distance between the Two coil sides which are connected to the same commuter segments is called as the front pitch. I have already told you the back pitch and the front pitch. Back pitch is associated with the overall and the front pitch is associated with the commuter segments. The back pitch is associated with the overall and the front pitch is associated with the commuter segments. The distance between the two coil sides which are connected to the same commuter segment is called as the front pitch. So whenever the back pitch is greater than front pitch, front pitch is called as the 
progress value. Otherwise, if y is less than y of it is called the retrogressive value. I have already told this important concept so much. So, the distance between the two coils which are connected to the same commutative segments is called the front page. Whereas, the distance between the two coil sets which are connected to the, the overhang, that is O, is called as the back page. So, whenever the back page is greater than front page, it is called as the progressive winding. And whenever the back page is less than front page, it is called as the retrogressive winding. So, brushes in DC machine are made up of carbon. So, we are going to make the brushes in a DC machine, which are basically made of carbon only. The brushes in DC machine are basically made up of carbon. The brushes in DC machine are basically made up of carbon. The effect of armature reaction in the DC machine operating in the saturation region is dematizing and cross matizing. I have already told you the effect of armature reaction in the DC machine operating in the saturation region is dematizing and the cross matizing. Dematizing means the flux is reducing. Cross matizing means there is a there is a distortion in the flux. The effect of armature reaction in the DC machine operating in the saturation region is basically dematizing and also the cross matizing. So these two things are going to occur in a DC machine. So the effect of armature reaction in a DC machine operating in the saturation region is dematizing and also the cross matizing. So saturation means see in the unsaturation region means there is no dematization, there is only cross matization. In saturation means there is a dematization and also the cross matization. So in the unsaturation region there is no dematization, there is only cross matization. So as in the saturation region there is both dematization and also the cross matization. Steered pole induction motor have the low solid torque. I have already told you the steered pole induction motor has the low solid torque. I have already told you it is a self starting motor also. It is basically a self starting motor. It is basically a self starting motor. So therefore, but still it has the low starting torque and compared to other motors, other single phase induction motors. So for zero power factor leading power factor, the effect of armature reaction on the main flux in an alternator. So for zero leading power factor means here phi f and phi r are in the same direction, so it is called as a magnetizing only. For zero leading power factor, the effect of armature reaction on the main flux in the alternator is basically magnetizing only. The no load current of a single bus induction motor is 40 percentage of full load current. I already told you the no load current. The no load current of a single phase induction motor is nearly 30 to 50 percentage. It is nearly 30 to 50 means take a value which is between the minus of 40. 40 percentage of the full load primary current. So therefore, the no load current of a single phase induction motor is 40 percentage of the full load current. The fall in terminal voltage of a loaded DC sense generator is mainly due to weakening effect of the field current. The fall in terminal voltage of a loaded DC sense generator is mainly due to weakening effect of the field current. So therefore, I have already told you the fall terminal voltage of a DC of a loaded DC shunt generator is mainly due to weakening effect of the field current. So I have already told you suppose if you are going to give a load for a DC shunt generator, the current IA is going to get passed. So whenever current IA is going to get passed, this IA is going to produce some uh, flux this called as the it is called the electrical torque. Electrical torque and the mechanical torque are quite opposite of each other. So because of this, what is going to happen? Because of this, we can simply say that the operation is going to get happen. So speed is going to reduce. So current I is going to get reduced. So flux is going to get reduced. So E is going to get reduced. So terminal voltage also reduces. So therefore, the fall in terminal voltage of a loaded decision generator is mainly due to weakening effect of the field current because I have already told you whenever you go for the loaded operation, the current IA is going to get formed. This IA is going to produce a flux which is opposite to the rotation of the, so therefore this electrical torque and the mechanical torque are quite opposite. So therefore we are going to get a decrease in speed. As the speed decreases, definitely we are going to get a, as the decrease in speed means definitely we are going to get a uh, less EG. So less EG means less VT. So this is the point that you always have to remember. The DC motor used for intermittent high torque loads is basically DC similar to combo motor. I have already told you if there is any sudden loads then definitely we have to use the DC cumulative to combo motor. The DC motor used for intermittent high torque loads sudden change in load is called as the cumulative to combo motor. A cumulative DC combo motor runs at 1500 RPM. So a DC cumulative to combo motor runs at 1500 RPM on full load. If it series field winding is short circuited, see I have already told you whenever the series filing is short circuited, then flux will decrease because phi is equal to phi h plus phi sc. As phi sc is equal to 0, the flux will decrease. So therefore, the speed will increase. So therefore, we can say that a cumulative basic compound motor runs at 1500 rpm on full load. If the series field is short circuited, the speed will 
increase. In OC test, in OC test, HUI, HV is open in a classroom. But I already told you, in the OC test, we need rated voltage. We need to give the we need to give the rated voltage. So on LV, the rated voltage is less. So we we do the we give the supply to the LV winding and we give the open circuit for the HV winding. So as in the SC test, we need the rated current. So simply in the HV winding, we get the the rated current of less value. So we give the supply to the HV winding and we do the short circuit to the LV winding. So in OC test, HV is open circuited in a transformer and in SC test, LV is short circuited in a transformer. I have already told you, open circuit test in a transformer is equal to the no load test of a induction motor and the short circuit test in a transformer is equal to the block rotor test in a induction motor. The voltage regulation of an over compound DC generator on full load is negative because voltage regulation is called E2 minus V2 by E2 minus V2 by V2 for a for the rotating machines. So it is for the no load voltage and V2 is the rated voltage. But here for DC over compound or over compound DC generator, the rated voltage is greater than the no load voltage. So therefore we are going to get a negative value. The voltage regulation of an over compound DC generator on full load is negative. In a squat connected transformer, the number of tones in the main and the teaser transformers respectively are. In a squat connected transformer, the number of tones in the main and the teaser transformer respectively are. See, the primary winding, the primary winding, in the primary winding of main transformer, we have turns as T by 2 plus T by 2. And in the, the primary winding of a teaser transformer, we will have root 3 into T by 2. So, root 3 into T by 2. So, this is a very important point here. In a Scott connected transformer, the number of primary turns, it is basically here, we have to write here, primary turns in the main and the teaser transformer respectively are T by 2 plus T by 2. And this is root 3 T by 2. So, T by 2 plus T by 2 is nothing but these are the primary turns in the, it is a, it is a primary turns, it is a primary number of turns in the main transformer and this is the primary number of turns in the teaser transformer. This basically here, we have to write here primary turns. So, in a Scott connected transformer, the number of primary turns in the main and the teaser transformer respectively are T by 2 plus T by 2 and root the T by 2. The essential condition for parallel operation of two these generators is they have the same thermal voltage. I have already told you. The essential condition for the, the essential means the necessary condition for the parallel operation of two these generators is they have the same terminal voltage. So, if they have two, two same terminal voltage only, generally we have to opt for the parallel operation in DC generators. So, if they have the same terminal voltage of these generators, then only we go for the parallel operation. So, the essential or necessary condition for parallel operation of two DC generators, if they have the same terminal voltage. The essential condition for parallel operation of two DC generators if, is they have the same terminal voltage. So, if they have same terminal voltage, then we can go for the parallel, of, or parallel operation of the two DC generators. The essential condition for parallel operation of two DC generators is they have the same terminal voltage. The type of rotor preferred for alternators driven by steam turbine is cylindrical rotors. The type of rotor preferred for alternators driven by steam turbine is cylindrical rotors. I have already told you. In a thermal power plant and a nuclear power plant, we use the cylindrical rotors. Cylindrical rotors have the small diameter but huge amount of action length. Whereas in the in the hydro power plant, we use the, the silent pool rotors, which has the huge amount of diameter but less amount of action length. These things I have already told you. The type of rotor preferred for alternators driven by steam turbine is cylindrical rotors, and the type of rotor preferred for uh, for the for alternators driven by for in the, you can say in hydro power plant we use the uh, surround pole rotors. The simplest method of shifting load from one shunt generator to other running in parallel done by adjusting the field rheostats. The simplest method of shifting load from one shunt generator to the other running in parallel done by adjusting the field rheostats. The simplest method of shifting load from one shunt generator to the other running in parallel is done by adjusting the field rheostats. So, the simplest method of shifting load from one shunt generator to the other shunt generator running in parallel is done by adjusting the field rheostats. So, with the help of field rheostats, we can, we can basically shift the load from one shunt DC generator to the other shunt DC generator. Or simply we can say that we can increase the amount of sharing of the load with the help of field rheostats. So, with the help of field rheostats, we can, we can increase or decrease the amount of sharing of load from one generator to the load. So, therefore, the simplest method of shifting load from one shunt generator to the other running in parallel done by adjusting the field rheostats. 
The simplest method of shifting load from one shunt generator to the other running in parallel is done by adjusting the field rheostats. The speed of single phase induction motor can be controlled by varying the applied voltage to the stator winding or varying the number of poles on the stator. These things are only told in the induction motor concept only. The speed of single phase, the speed of single phase induction motor can be controlled by varying the applied voltage to the stator winding or varying the number of poles on the stator because NR is equal to NS is equal to 120 F by P. So it is good. It's very dependent upon the the number of poles on the stator and also on the applied voltage to the stator winding. So therefore, the speed of the single phase induction motor can be controlled by varying the applied voltage to the stator winding or varying the number of poles on the stator. Either by varying the applied voltage to the stator winding or varying the number of poles on the stator, we can control the speed of the single phase induction motor. So therefore, the speed of single phase induction motor can be controlled by varying the applied voltage to the stator winding or varying the number of poles on the stator. So, the speed of single phase induction motor, the speed of single phase induction motor can be controlled, the speed of single phase induction motor can be controlled by varying the applied voltage to the stator winding or by varying the number of poles to the stator. So, either we can basically vary the applied voltage to the stator winding or vary the number of poles in the stator, we can control the speed of the single phase induction motor. See, this, in a squat connection, the turns ratio is nothing but it is the, it is the voltage ratio of main transformer. So, it is K is equal to N1 by N2. N1 is the number of poles in the primary winding of the main transformer. N2 is the number of windings present on the secondary, secondary windings of the main transformer. It is K or N1 by N2. So, turns ratio is that the ratio of the primary winding by secondary winding turns. Then, the turns ratio of the TZ transformer is equal to root 3 by root 3 by 2 into n1 by n2 which is we are going to get root 3 by 2 into k. Turns ratio means the ratio of the primary winding turns by secondary winding turns. Whereas the transformation ratio is the reverse one which is the ratio of the secondary winding turns by primary winding turns. It is a very important point. Turns ratio is called as the ratio of the number of turns of primary winding by number of turns of secondary winding. Whereas the, the transformation ratio is the ratio of the is the ratio of the secondary winding turns by primary winding turns or simply we can say it is the inverse of the turns ratio. So, turns ratio is called as the voltage ratio of main transformer which is k is equal to the primary winding the main, for main transformer the primary winding turns are n1 for, for, for main transformer the secondary winding is n2 and for the turns ratio of teaser transformer the primary winding turns are root 3 by 2 into n1 by secondary winding turns are n2 so we are going to get root 3 by 2 into k at no load at no load induction motor works at lagging power factor I already told you Induction motor is always going to work at the lagging power factor, whether it is a new load condition or whether it is a low load condition. Always it is going to operate only at the lagging power factor only. So, it works at low lagging power factor. I have already told you at no load condition, the theta is very huge value. So, power factor is equal to very less. So, we can say low lagging power factor. Always the power factor of induction motor is always lagging in nature. The iron loss or core loss will be in the yoke of a DC machine. The iron loss or core loss will be in the only yoke of a DC machine. Why? Because here core loss because simply we can say the yoke is a the yoke is basically non-laminated. So therefore the iron loss or core loss in a DC machine is going to occur only in the yoke of a DC machine. The iron loss or core loss will be only in the yoke of a DC machine. The cut polarities must be satisfied before connecting the transformers in parallel. I have already told you, we have to connect only the similar polarities, then only we go for the parallel transformer application. So therefore, collect cut polarities must be, cut, must be satisfied before connecting the transformers in parallel. Means, if you want the connecting transformers in parallel, the similar, the similar polarities should be connected. So therefore, the cut polarities must be satisfied before connecting the transformers in parallel. The cut polarities must be satisfied before connecting the transformers in parallel. Parallel. Electrical angle is equal to mechanical angle into P by 2. I have already told you electrical angle is equal to P by 2 into mechanical angle where P is equal to the number of poles. When a synchronous, when a synchronous generator supplying power at rate at voltage with a zero power factor lagging, then the direction of the armature flux will be opposite to the main field flux. Therefore, it will oppose and weaken the main field flux. It is used to demagnetizing. I have already told you when a synchronous generator supplying power at rate of voltage with a zero power factor lagging, then the direction of the armature flux will be opposite to the main field flux. Therefore, it will oppose and weaken the main field flux. It is used to demagnetization. So, therefore, whenever a single generator supplying power at rate of voltage with a zero power factor lagging, 
in the direction of the armature flux will be opposite to the main field flux, therefore it will oppose and weaken the main field flux, it is used to demagazing. The EMF and MMF methods are used to determine the voltage regulation of an alternator. I have already told you the different type of methods, EMF method, MMF method, ZPF method and ASC methods. So these are the different methods by which we can figure out the voltage regulation of an alternator. So EMF method, MMF method. Uh, ZPF method and ASA methods. These are the methods by which we can determine the voltage regulation of an alternator. The MMF produced by the rotor currents of a three phase induction motor and the stator rotating RMF. MMF are stationary with respect to each other. So, what are the, the MMF produced by stator winding and the MMF produced by the rotor winding? They are always stationary with respect to each other because they are going to with the same speed in the same direction. So, MMF produced by the rotor currents of a three phase induction motor and the stator rotating MMF are stationary with respect to each other. So, what are the MMF produced by the rotor winding and the MMF produced by the stator winding? They are in phase with each other and they are going to in the same direction with this same direction with the speed of NS. So, therefore, the MMF produced by the rotor currents of a three phase induction motor and the stator rotating MMF are stationary with respect to each other. Stepper motors are more suitable in computer printer drive. I have already told you for the printers we are going to use basically the stepper motors. But if you want the cooling fan under your laptop then we go for the standard pole motors. I have already told you that one. So stepper motors are more suitable in computer printer drive and in the laptop, in the, in the, in the, under your laptop there is a cooling fan where we use the Serial pole single phase induction motor. So, stepper motors are basically more stable in the computer printer drive. DTN torque has the highest numerical value in stepper motor. So, DTN torque has the highest numerical value in the stepper motor. So, DTN torque will have the highest numerical value in the stepper motor. In the stepper motor, there are so many torques. Out of this, this DTN torque will have the highest numerical value in the stepper motor. So, in a stepper motor, there are so many number of torques are going to present, but only out of this. This DTN torque is having the highest numerical value. So, DTN torque has the highest numerical value in the stepper motor. So, this is basically a synchronous generator. So, if I give a supply here, so basically this is a synchronous motor. So, here I am going to, this is a synchronous motor, I am going to rotate this one. So, with the help of this rotation, I am going to generate the power here. So, basically here I am going to rotate the synchronous motor here and here. We are going to generate here. Let me assume all the speeds are same. NS is equal to here 120 F by F1 by P1 is equal to 120 F2 by P2. So 120 F1 by P1 is equal to 120 F2 by P2. For these two things we are going to equal because the speed is always same because both are not there. So in a synchronous generator with constant steam input, the constant steam input supplies power to an infrared bus at a lagging power factor. See basically in a synchronous generator with constant steam input. Constant steam input means the output power is also constant. So, P is equal to constant. So, supply is to an infinite bus at a lagging power factor. So, lagging power factor means the current I is going to lag the terminal voltage V. If the excitation is increased, then both power angles and the power factors are going to get decreased. The power angle is also called as a torque angle. So, torque angle means delta and the power factor both will decrease because I already told you in the concept here as a, let me explain this one in a very, very detailed manner. So, P is equal to E into EF into V by X is into sin theta. As a P is a constant, as excitation is increased, as excitation is increased, EF is also increased. So, then for now, here V is a constant, X is a constant. So, definitely EF into sin theta should be always constant. So, EF into sin delta is always constant. So, EF bar is equal to VT bar plus JIA into XS bar. So, therefore, now, if excitation is increased, so what is going to happen? So, basically, initially it is a lagging power factor. Initially, it is a lagging power factor. So, if the, now, the excitation is increased, then what is going to happen? EF into sin delta is always constant. So, if the excitation is increased, then definitely we can say that. If the excitation is increased, the power angle, the power angle means simply we can say the angle between the, the angle between the, P is equal to V into IA into cos theta. So, cos theta. So, P is a constant, V is a constant. So, IA cost is also constant. So, therefore, we can say whenever the excitation is increased, the IA is decreased. The IA is decreased and also the delta is, the delta is increased. The delta is increased and the power factor angle decreases. So, power factor increases. So, here listen carefully. See with the concept. So, for a single generator with a constant steam input, supplies power to an infinite bus at lagging power factor. If the excitation is increased, then both power angles and power factor decreases because I have already told you that P is equal to. So, P is equal to basically 
e e into e f into v by x s into sin delta. So as as v is the constant, x is the constant, p is the constant. So therefore, simply we can say e f into sin delta is constant as excitation increases, e f increases. So whenever the excitation increases, so in the lagging power factor, if you increase the excitation, definitely we can say that the delta angle decreases. The delta angle decreases and the current I A increases and the current I A increases and the I A into constant is also equal to I A into constant is also equal to constant. So it simply as the excitation increases, the E F increases and I A increases and the power factor angle increases. So power factor decreases. So power factor is decreases and the power factor angle increases. The value decreases. Here power angle is also called as the delta. Here this power means power angle is also called as the torque angle of the delta angle. It is the angle between the EF and V. So therefore it will decrease and now and the theta the theta will angle the theta will increase so power factor decreases. So finally I can say that whenever the excitation is increased the delta value decreases. Delta is also called as the power angle of power angle of torque angle the value of delta will decrease. So power angle decreases and the theta value increases. Theta value increases means the power factor decreases and the current I A will increase and always E F into sin delta is always constant and I A into cos delta is always equal to constant. So this is the important thing that you always need to understand. A synchronous machine connected to power system get bus bar is operating gas generator. To make the machine operate as motor, the fuel acceleration is to be decreased. A synchronous machine connected to power system get bus bar is operating as generator. To make the machine operate as motor, the fuel acceleration is to be decreased. A synchronous machine connected to power system grid bus bar is operating as a generator. To make the machine operate as a motor, the field excitation is to be decreased. So if you decrease the excitation, definitely we can change from generator to motor. So if you go for changing of excitation, so therefore if the field excitation is decreased, we can go for operating as generator to the motor. A synchronous machine connected to power system grid bus bar is operating as generator. To make the machine operate as motor, the field excitation is to be decreased. See, as I already told you, in a synchronous in a synchronous generator, always E F is always greater than V. Whereas in synchronous motor, always E F is always less than V. So if you decrease the field excitation, then E F will decrease. So V will increase. So it is going to act like a motor. That is the thing that I am trying to tell you. So in a single generator, E F is always greater than V. So in a synchronous motor, E F is always less than V. So if you decrease the excitation, E F decreases. So V will increase. So therefore, it is going to act like a motor. So a synchronous machine connected to power system grid bus bar is operating as generator. To make the machine operate as a motor, the field acceleration is to be decreased. The slightest curvature at the lower end of the OCC of a self-excited disc generator is due to residual flux. The slightest curvature at the lower end of the OCC of a self-excited this generator is due to residual flux. Because of residual flux only, there is a small amount of EM is produced even at the no load current. So therefore, even if the fuel current is equal to zero, still an a, a EMF is going to be produced because of the residual flux. It is must. If it is not there means you cannot go for the self excitation So if there is no residual flux, there will be no there will be no increase of voltage or no build up of voltage. So if residual flux is absent, no build up of voltage. If it is a present, then only build up of voltage will happen. So slight conversion at the lower end of the OCC of a self-excited generator is due to residual flux. In a three-phase slip ring induction motor, high starting torque is achieved by connecting a star connected resistance across the slip ring terminals of the motor. In a three-phase slip ring induction motor, high starting torque is achieved by connecting a star connected resistance across the slip ring terminals of the motor. I have already told you, the starting torque is directly proportional to rotor resistance. As the rotor resistance increases, the starting torque increases. So, must, this is possible only in the case of slip ring induction motor. We can connect the external star connected resistance to the, the rotor terminals with the help of slip rings. I have already shown in the graphs also in the, in the slip ring induction motor. In a synchronous, if the field flux axis ahead of the armature field axis in a direction of rotation, the machine is going to operate as a synchronous generator. In a, in a synchronous machines, if the field flux axis ahead of the armature field axis, so here simply they are saying that the field flux is ahead of the armature flux, so it is ahead of the armature flux, then we can say it is said to be, it is said to be basically generator. The vice versa, vice versa is basically when the armature flux is ahead of the field flux, it is said to be motor and the, that everything is here. 
But now the field flux is ahead of the armature flux. It is acting like a synchronous generator. I have already told everything in the concept itself. So it is synchronous. If the field flux axis ahead of the armature field axis in direct rotation, the machine is operating as a synchronous generator. So now, so now we will discuss about the other important point, which is the arc voltage in a circuit breaker is in phase with the arc current. So always in a circuit breaker, so whatever the arc voltage and also the arc current will be always in phase with respect to each other because it is going to act like a purely resistive part. Because of this reason only, we can say that always the arc voltage in a circuit breaker is always going to be in phase with the arc current. So because the circuit breaker is going to act like a pure resistive, so, the, so therefore we can say that whatever the arc voltage and the arc current will be always in phase in a circuit breaker. The equilibrium criteria for determination of transient stability of a synchronous machine connected to an infinite bus. So basically this equal area criteria for the, for the determination of transient stability of a synchronous machine connected to an infinite bus. So basically this, this equal area criteria is going to be, it is going to determine the transient stability of a synchronous machine whenever it is connected to an infinite bus. So, I have already told you the transient stability means whatever the studies that you are going to do in the first swing of the power system is going to, see to be transient studies. So, here basically this one which, which we are going to call this as the, the equal area criteria. The equal area criteria for the determination of transient stability of a synchronous machine car to an infinite bus. So, whatever this EAC equal area criteria it is going to basically find the transient stability of a synchronous machine. Basically, this equilibrium criteria is going to find that it is going to determine the transient stability of a synchronous machine which is currently to an infinite bus. I have already told you whatever the study that you are going to do in the first swing of a power system is said to be transient stability studies. So, ignores the line as well as the synchronous machine resistance and shunt capacitance. Always we have to ignore. Always we have to ignore the line as well as, well as the synchronous machine resistance and the shunt capacitance. See now then, and also the synchronous machine we are going to neglect the, the machine resistance, basically the resistance part and also the shunt capacitance. These two things that we are always going to ignore them. So always we are going to ignore the line, the resistance part and also the synchronous machine resistance part, the resistance part and also the shunt capacitance. All these things we are going to ignore to make the analysis in a very simpler manner. So this is the agenda in always analyzing the things which are very much easier. So we are going to ignore few things if you want to make the analysis in a very simpler manner. So for the line as well as the synchronous machine, the resistance part that we are going to ignore them or neglect them and also the shunt capacitance of the, of the transmission line also we are going to neglect it because to make the analysis in a very simpler manner. So we have to assume that accelerating power co activity acting on rotor is cause constant. So we have to assume that accelerating power acting on the rotor is constant. So always we are going to assume that whatever the accelerating power which is acting on a rotor. So I have already told you accelerating power is equal to mechanical power minus electrical power. So accelerating power is equal to mechanical power minus electrical power. Input is the mechanical power, output is the electrical power. So difference of this is called as the accelerating power. So we are we have to assume that whatever this power is acting on the rotor of a synchronous machine, we have to assume it is always constant. So therefore, we have we are we need to always assume that whatever the accelerating power acting on the rotor is always constant. To introduce the effects of the voltage regulator and governor that concerns the inherent damping present in the machine. So we have to even ignore the effect of voltage regulator and the governor that concerns the inherent damping present in the machine. So, the, so we have to basically ignore the so, we, so basically we have to ignore the effect of the voltage regulator and governor that considers the inherent damping present in the system. So we have to ignore the effect of voltage regulator and the governor that considers the inherent damping present in the machine. So we, we have to even neglect the, we have to even ignore the effect of the voltage regulator and the governor that considers the inherent damping present in the machine. Reflector mirrors employed for exploiting solar energy are called as the heliostats. So reflector mirrors employed for exploiting the solar energy are called as the heliostats. Basically, 
heat you can see basically how to make use of solar energy so basically we are going to use the electric turbines so because of this we are going to use the we are going to use the solar energy for a good purpose so basically they are called as the heliostats so what are the reflector mirrors which are employed for using the or we can simply say that exploiting is basically using the solar energy for a good purpose which is called as the heliostars so what are the reflector mirrors that are employed for exploiting or using the solar energy for a good purpose are called as the heliostars for production of rotating machines against the lightning surges a combination of lightning resistor and a capacitor is also used so if you want to protect the if you want to protect the rotating machines against the lightning machine lightning surges so we have to use the combination of the lightning resistor and also capacitor yes these two are always needed but if you want to but if you want to basically protect the transfer line then we have to use only lightning resistor but if you want to protect the rotating machines then we have to use the combination of the lightning resistor and capacitor see the explanation of this i have already explained in a very detailed manner in the in the in the bhl question paper you can see there the to the nanin question paper i explain in detail why we have to use the capacitor in, in series with the lightning resistor so for production of rotating machines against the lightning surges always we have to use the combination of lightning resistor and also capacitor but if you want to protect the only the single transmission line from the lightning surges we need only lightning resistor but if you want to protect the rotating machines or we can say against the lightning surges we need to use the combination of the lightning resistor and also the capacitor the inverse current of a transformer at low load is maximum if the supply voltage is switched on at zero voltage value i have already told you if you close the switch at a, at an instant when the voltage value is zero then definitely we are going to get a, a maximum inverse current but if you close the switch at a, t is equal to at a maximum value of the voltage then we are going to get then there is no possibility of the doubling effect then there is no possibility of high inverse current so this is a very important concept that i have already told you in the transformer concepts only the inverse current of a transformer at no load is maximum if the supply voltage is switched on at the zero voltage value so if you close the switch at a instant when the voltage supply voltage is equal to zero then there is a doubling effect so with the, with the help of this the, the doubling effect whatever the inverse current will be very huge value but if you close the switch at an instant when the supply voltage is maximum then definitely we can say that there is no doubling effect so therefore there is no huge amount of inverse current so this is a very important point that you always have to understand i have explained in detail also the derivation also i have already told in the transformers then you can check there the positive negative and zero sequence impedance of a solidly grounded system under steady state condition always follows the relation z1 greater than z2 greater than z0 z1 is called as the positive sequence impedance and z2 is called as the negative sequence impedance and z0 is called as the zero sequence impedance the positive negative and zero sequence impedance of a solidly grounded system under steady state condition always follows the relation see if you want to compare the impedances like positive sequence impedance negative sequence impedance and zero sequence impedance of a solidly grounded system under steady state condition see if you want to compare the uh, in the sequence impedances of a solidly grounded system solidly grounded means here solidly grounded means i want to tell you in the power system concepts here we are going to use the like with the help of solidly grounded we are going to ground it so therefore i want to tell you here if you compare at the steady state condition always the positive sequence impedance is greater than the negative sequence impedance is greater than the zero sequence impedance so therefore always for a solidly grounded system under the steady state conditions always the sequence of impedance are going to follow the relation which is z1 is greater than z2 is greater than z0 so therefore the positive negative and zero sequence impedance of a solidly grounded system under steady state condition always follows the relation which is z1 greater than z2 greater than z0 so this is a very important point that you always need to understand regarding this one so the positive negative and zero sequence impedance of a solidly grounded system under steady state condition is going to follow the relation which is z1 greater than z2 greater than z0 unbound frequency of oscillations of a synchronous machine is given by pr by m over the power of 0.5 here pr by m over the power of 0.5 is equal as the unbound frequency of oscillations of a synchronous machine so pr by m over the power of 0.5 is equal as the unbound frequency of oscillations of a synchronous machine so pr by m 
under the power of 0.5 is called as the unknown frequency of oscillations of a synchronous machine. So, this I have already told in the power system concept. So, therefore, PR by M under the power of 0.5 is called as the undamped frequency of oscillations of a synchronous machine, which is PR by M under the power of 0.5. So, PR by M under the power of 0.5 is called as the undamped frequency of oscillations of a synchronous machine. See, in each and everything I have already told you the synchronous machine concepts itself. So, this is the important formula that you always have to remember because in the examinations they are going to give you this direct formula. So, you have to always remember which is PR by M over the power of 0.5 is called as the undamped frequency of oscillations of a synchronous machine. Arc resistance decreases with increase in arc current. I have already told you here, if the arc current increases means definitely the, the resistance must decrease then the current will increase because both are inversely proportional. So, therefore, simply we can say the arc resistance decreases with increase in arc current because arc current will only increase whenever the arc resistance decreases because both are inversely proportional. This you can easily visualize also with the help of these things. So, therefore, we can say that whenever the arc current increases, simply we can say that the arc resistance is decreases. The speed torque characteristics of a series motor is a hyperbola. The speed torque characteristics of a series motor is a hyperbola. The speed torque characteristics of a series motor is a hyperbola. I have already told you the speed torque characteristics. The speed torque, the speed torque characteristics of a DC series motor is a hyperbola. I have already told you which is N is inversely proportional to T. See, N is inversely proportional to T. Or simply we can say N is directly proportional to 1 by T. So, whenever the torque increases, the speed will decreases. These things I have already told you. The graph is nothing but it is a hyperbola. In a DC generator, if the variable loss is equal to constant loss, then the efficiency is maximum. See, in a DC generator, when the, at the maximum efficiency, always the variable loss is always equal to the constant loss. So, in a DC machine, or simply we can say in a DC machine, the maximum efficiency is going to occur only whenever the constant loss is equal to variable loss. Or simply we can say, whenever the variable loss is equal to constant loss, then only we can say that, the DC machine is going to have a maximum efficiency. So, the condition at maximum efficiency is what are the variable loss must be equal to the constant loss. The armature of a DC machine is laminated to reduce the eddy current loss. I have already told you the armature of a DC machine is laminated to reduce the eddy current loss. See, in a DC machine, yoke is non laminated, but pole is laminated and also the armature core is also laminated. So, therefore, you can say that here the yoke is non laminated the core is laminated and the armature core is also laminated. So, why we are going to use the lamination because to reduce the eddy current loss. So, armature core of a DC machine is laminated to reduce the eddy current losses. So, this is a very important point that you always need to keep to understand the concepts regarding this one. So, therefore, simply we can say that here always the armature core of a DC machine is laminated to reduce the eddy current losses. So, the armature of a DC machine is laminated to reduce the eddy current loss. I have already told you basically one important point is I have already told you in the class itself, always in a DC machine the yoke is non laminated and the armature core is laminated and the poles are laminated. See why they are going to laminate because to reduce the eddy current loss that, that is called as a basic agenda in order to laminate the armature core. The armature of a DC machine is laminated because to reduce the eddy current loss. And the next point is the, the initial flux in a DC generator is provided by the residual magnetism. I have already told you. See, a initial flux is necessary for any self-excited DC generator. If there is no if there is no residual flux, there is nothing like self-excitation. So there is no self-excitation. If the, the residual magnetism is present in a magnet, then only a self-excitation is always possible. I have already told you this is one of the necessary conditions for getting the self excited voltage. So, therefore, you can say that the initial flux in a DC generator is provided by the residual magnetism. For the operation of milling machines, DC shunt motor is used. I have already told you, DC shunt motor, the most advantage of DC shunt motor is from low load to full load, the, the change of speed is very less or simply we can call it as the, we can call it as the constant speed motor. In a milling machine, so we need to drive the belt at a constant speed. See, whenever there is a constant speed application need, needed, definitely we have to use the DC shunt motor there. So, we can say that for the operation of milling machines, DC shunt motor is used. In a DC series motor, the torque is proportional to the square of the armature current only in the unsaturation region. 
and it is there to proportional to R which are current in the saturated region. So therefore, the volume to volume torque is proportional to flux into R which are current. So in the unsaturated region, the flux is there to proportional to R which are current. So if we substitute here, we are going to get T is there to proportional to I A into I A is nothing but I A square. So therefore, only in the unsaturated region. The torque is that proportional to the square of the armature current. Whereas in the saturation region, we can say that simply the flux is independent of the armature current because it's always saturated. So as no flux is a constant, so therefore torque that the torque is that proportional to armature current. So therefore we can say in the unsaturation region, in a DC series mode, the torque is that proportional to the square of armature current. Whereas in the saturation region, the torque is that proportional to armature current. Swimmer test on a DC machine is used to figure out the constant losses. <coughs> See, I have already told you, Swimmer test on a DC machine is used to figure out the constant losses. See, if we know the constant losses, then we can find the efficiency at any load because constant losses are always same irrespective of the load. So, if we know the constant losses, then simply we can figure out the efficiency at any load. That machine can be either motor or it can be generator. Basically, the Swinmore test is basically it is also called as the Molo test. See, Molo test means we cannot go for the DC series motor because see, DC series motor at Molo, it has huge amount of speed, so it will make that dangerous. So, therefore, it is dangerous for applications. So, only it is a Molo test, only those motors which are preferable for Molo test only are applied, are applied because like DC shunt motor and DC compound motor, they can use, they can apply for even Molo test also. But DC series motor, it cannot be applied at Molo test because at Molo test, the speed is very huge, so it is very, very dangerous. So, therefore, we do not do this test for the DC series motor, only for DC shunt motor and DC cumulative compound motor. So therefore, swimming test is on a DC machine is used to figure out the constant losses. So if you know the constant losses, then you can easily find, then you can easily find the, the efficiency of the motor or generator at any condition that you require. The series motor have a relatively high starting torque up to 500 percent. I already told you, out of all the motors, out of all the motors, DC series motor has the highest starting turn and uh, out of DC and AC motors, DC motors has the very good speed control and techniques. So these things I have already told you. So therefore simply we can say that the DC series motors have a relatively high torque, high starting torque up to 500 percentage, up to 500 percentage it can have the huge amount of starting torque. So in a DC shunt motor, I have already told you, in a DC shunt motor, whenever the supply voltage is a constant, then definitely we can say that whenever the supply voltage is a constant, the field current is a constant, so flux is a constant. So but torque is that of a boost on the flux into armature current, as the flux itself is equal to constant, then torque is that of a boost on the current. So it is a straight line, the graph between the torque and the armature current is a straight line passing through origin for all the time. So this is a very important point that you always have to keep remembering. So therefore, in a DC shunt motor, the torque is always the proportional to armature current. The internal characteristics of a DC shunt generator is a plot between the induced EMF and the armature current. I already told you, the internal characteristics of a DC shunt generator is a plot between the induced EMF and the armature current. So therefore, the internal characteristics means it is a, it is a graph between the induced EMF and the armature current. And the external, external characteristics means it is a graph between the terminal voltage and terminal current, whereas the OCC means it is a induced EMF at no load and a field current. So these are the three important graphs which are always being asked in the examination. So therefore, we can say that OCC means open circuit characteristics means simply it is a graph between the EMF induced in the generator at no load condition and the field current, whereas the internal characteristics means it is a plot between the, it is a plot between the induced EMF and the arbitrary current and the external characteristics is the graph between the terminal voltage and the terminal current. The back EMF of, of a motor at the starting, uh, at the time of starting is zero because at the starting the rotor speed is equal to zero, so therefore back EMF is equal to zero because back EMF is proportional to flux into arm, sleep, fly, flux into speed and speed itself is equal to zero and back EMF is equal to zero. So the back EMF of a motor at the time of starting is always zero. The back EMF of a motor at the time of starting is always zero. At low flux densities, the flux in a DC generator varies linearly with the field current. At low flux densities, 
the flux with this generator varies linearly with the field current. Simply they are meaning that it is called as the in the unsaturation region or low flux density. The flux is directly varying with the field current. The flux increases, the field current increases, the flux increases. So this is what I am trying to tell you here. So in the unsaturation region, flux is directly proportional to field current. If the field current is varying, flux is also varying. But in the saturation region, simply we can say even the field current is increasing, the flux will be always constant. So therefore, at low flux densities or the saturation region, the flux in a DC generator varies linearly with the field current because low flux densities is also called as the unsaturation region. So therefore, whatever the flux is directly proportional to field current. So as the field current increases, the flux increases. At high flux densities or the saturation region, the field current, the flux is always constant irrespective of the field current. A transformer can have a regulation closer to zero on leading power factor. I already told you, see, either it is a transformer or whether it is a alternator. Only in the leading power factor, they can have the voltage regulation of zero, which is near to unity power factor. This is near to unity power factor means in a leading near to unity power factor, they will have the zero voltage regulation. So a transformer can have, can have regulation closer to zero on a leading power factor. See, near to unity power factor means in the leading portion, they will have this zero voltage regulation. I have already told you here, the positive voltage regulation in the lagging load, the voltage regulation is always positive, whereas in the leading load, the voltage regulation can be positive, it can be negative, it can be even zero. Current transformer should never have the secondary open circuited when the primary is energized. I have already told you, the current transformer, see basically CD is also called as a current transformer so it is basically we have to decrease the current, decrease the current means the secondary winding should be always higher when compared to primary winding. As the voltage, as the number of turns are increases, the voltage is increases, so current will decreases. So simply we can say this ED is a set of transformer. So here, suppose if you are going to open the secondary, what is going to happen? If you are going to open the secondary, the turns are very higher. If the turns are secondary turns are very higher, so EMF induced is very higher. So with this EMF induced, we can say that the core is going to get damaged. So therefore, simply we can say that you don't have to open circuit the, you don't have to open circuit the uh, CT of secondary whenever the primary is energized. So CT should never have the secondary open circuited whenever the primary is energized. Because if you open it, the EMF in which the, in the winding is very higher because large number of turns. So therefore, simply we can say that here the core is going to get oversaturated. So therefore, that is the reason we never have to open circuit the secondary and not the primary is energized for a CT. So see, the current transformer should never have the secondary open circuited while the primary is energized. An isolation transformer has the primary to secondary turns ratio is minus to 1. I have already told you, isolation transformer does only one work. It is going to isolate the two electrical circuits. It only does the work of, it is a, it does only one thing, it is isolating the two electrical networks. But whatever the power is same in both the cases, same in the voltage is also same in both the cases, current is also same in both the windings. But only thing is, we are going to isolate the electrical circuits with this isolation transformer. So the ratio of the primary turns to secondary turns is always equal to 1 is to 1. So therefore, EMF induced in the primary winding is equal to EMF induced in the secondary winding and what are the current in the primary winding is equal to current in the secondary winding of this isolation transformer. A synchronous motor can be used as a synchronous capacitor when it is over excited. I have already told you a synchronous motor. See a synchronous motor at no load condition. See, if you are not going to keep any load of synchronous motor and if you go for the over excitation, then definitely in the over excitation, the synchronous motor is going to act in the leading region. So, in the leading region, it is going to act means the theta is the phase angle between the uh, terminal voltage and terminal current or supply voltage and supply current V and IA. So, therefore, now we can say that here theta is always leading. So, current IA is leading the V. So, we can say that always it is going to generate the reactive power and it is going to consume the active power. So, the synchronous motor in the over addition it is going to generate the reactive power but it is going to absorb the active power at no load condition. So, it is going to act like a synchronous capacitor means it can improve the power factor, it can improve the power factor of the system. For a synchronous motor at no load condition in the under excited state, it is going to behave like a inductor. So, it is going to accept the reactive power. So, therefore, it, it is used to compensate the Effect. The harmonic component of the generated EMF will be more 
in the alternate as with full pitch coins. The harmonic component of the generated EMF will be more in the alternate as with full pitch coin. I have already told you if you go for the full pitch coins, if you go for the full pitch coins, means whenever the whenever the coin span is equal to full pitch, then we call these findings as it to be full pitch coins. Whenever the coin span is less than full pitch, it is called as the short pitch winding. And whenever the coin span is given than full pitch, it is called as the over pitch winding. All of these, these things I have already told you. And I have already told you, because of this short pitch, we are going to remove the harmonics, whatever the things that we don't want. But if you go for full pitch, all the harmonics are going to get present. If all the harmonics are going to present, then we don't want that to happen because only we need the fundamental component, but we don't need the other harmonics. So we, th th that is the reason we go for the short pitch finding to remove all the harmonics except the fundamental. So therefore we are going to get a pure sine wave in the output of the alternator. So whenever you go for the full pitch coins, all the harmonics are going to get present. So therefore simply we can see the harmonic current is very higher. So therefore simply we can see that the harmonic component of generated EMF will be more in alternatives with the full pitch coils. So we come for a synchronous motor represent the relation between the armature current and the field current. So this is the same for either it is a synchronous motor or either it is a synchronous generator. The V graph is the graph between the armature current and the field current. So this is the point that you always have to remember whether it is a synchronous motor or whether it is a synchronous generator. V curve is the graph between the armature current and the field current. So this is the thing that you, that you always have to remember. So V curve for a synchronous motor or synchronous generator represents the relation between the armature current and the field current. I is called as the armature current and I is called as the field current. The crawling in an induction motor is caused by harmonics. I have already told you. See, because of the harm, whenever, whenever the stator has no stars, then we can say the flux is nothing but the flux in the air gap is always pure sinusoidal. Whereas, if you go for, if the stator and the rotor are stars, then definitely what of the flux in the air gap is not pure sinusoidal. So, it will have a lot of amount of harmonics. So, because of this harmonics, the rotor, the overall torque speed characteristics are going to get changed at the high slip region we are going to get a stable region so because of this as the slip is high so we can say the speed is very the speed of the rotor is very less which is nearly equal to ns by 7 so the crawling means simply we can say the induction motor is running at low speed assuming that it is a stable region so therefore the crawling induction motor is caused because of the harmonics so crawling in an induction motor is caused because of the harmonics developed in the motor so because of this harmonics only the rotor is going to run at a very low speed which is nearly equal to 1 by 7 of the synchronous speed and it is going to assume it has a stable region. The ratio of the starting torque to normal torque in case of a star delta starter will be 1 by 3. I have already told you the ratio of the starting torque, the ratio of the starting torque to the normal torque in case of a star delta starter will be 1 by 3. I have already told you the starting torque in a star delta is equal to 1 by 3 times the the starting torque of the BOL. Similarly, the starting current of the star delta is equal to 1 by 3 times the starting current of the BOL. So, BOL may, means basically here we are going to use the stator winding as a delta function. But star delta means initially we are going to assume it as a star connection and then later we are going to convert into the delta fashion. So, therefore, initially we are going to assume the stator is connected in a star fashion and later, and later it is going to connect in the delta fashion like this we are going to assume here. So this is the point that you always have to keep remembering this important point. So therefore always the ratio or simply we can say the starting torque in the start delta starter is equal to 1 by 3 times the, the starting torque of the BOL or direct online or we can say normal. So therefore normal starting torque or the, the starting current of the start delta is equal to 1 by 3 times the starting current of the BOL. F dash is equal to SM to F when F is called as the supply frequency, so frequency of supply to the induction motor and F dash is called as the frequency of the rotor EMF and S is called as the slip. So the, the, this is a this is a basic relation between the, the rotor slip and the, the rotor frequency and the supply frequency. F dash is called S into F when F is called as the supply frequency to the induction motor and F dash is the frequency of the rotor EMF and S is the called as the slip. In a tune line, the receiving end voltage and the current are numerically equal to the corresponding sending end values. See, tuned line means simply we can say the receiving end voltage and the current are numerically equal to the corresponding sending end values. See, 
only the numerical values we have to consider. So in the two line, only the, the receiving end the, the receiving end voltage and the sending end voltage numerical values are same and the receiving end current and the sending end current the numerical values are same. Then we can say this to be a two line. A two line means the receiving end voltage and the current are numerically equal to the corresponding sending end values. So simply we can see that in a tune line the numerical value of the sending end voltage is equal to the receiving the receiving end voltage is equal to sending end voltage and similarly the numerical value of the receiving end current is equal to sending end current. This is in case of a tuned line. The maximum torque in an induction motor depends upon the frequency. I have already told you the maximum torque expression in an induction motor is equal to 120 by 2 pi 120 by 2 pi ms into e to square by 2 into x2 as ms is a proportional to frequency and x2 is also proportional to frequency. So simply we can say that the starting torque is actually proportional to 1 by the f square. These things I have already told you in the previous classes only. So capacitor run motor will have the relatively high power factor. I have already told you the capacitor run motor. So capacitor run motor will have the that will have relatively high power factor because whenever a capacitor is used, definitely it will improve the power factor. So capacitor run motor means simply we can say that the phase angle between the, the phase angle between the see with the help of this capacitor run motor the overall phase angle between the supply voltage and supply current will be very less. So then simply we can say as the phase angle is good less, the power factor is more and more. So capacitor run motor will have the relatively high power factor because it is going to decrease the, the phase angle between the supply voltage and the supply current because of this capacitor. So it is it, it basically has the highest power factor. Screenge motor can be used for unity power factor. I have already told you screenge motor. See screenge motor. Screenge, mo screenge motor means simply we can say it is also a synchronous motor. But at the no load condition we are going to operate in the over excitation. Then it is going then it, it can improve the power factor of the system. It can make even unity power factor. So screenge motor can be used for unity power factor. Means it is basically like, it's like a synchronous motor at the no load, no load condition at the over excitation. So it is going to deliver the reactive power. Means it is going to act like a a capacitor or simply we can say it is going to deliver the react to power. So it is going to improve the power factor of system. It can even make the unity power factor. In plugging of DC motors, connection to armchair are reversed. I have already told you plugging means here plugging means we need to stop the motor in a very small amount of time. So this is one of the methods by plugging we are going to stop the motor in a very less amount of time. So basically we are going to change the you have to change any one of the uh, either you change the field coil or whether you change the armature coil, it can change the coils. So therefore, the torque is directly proportional to flux into armature current. So, if you change the terminals of armature current, definitely I is negative, so torque is negative, and negative torque is going to get obtained on the rotor. So therefore, motor or, or rotor, then the speed is going to get decreased. So whenever the speed is going to become zero, just you have to of the supply. Otherwise, it will start to read in the reverse fashion. So therefore, this, this is the very important point that you always have to keep remember. So therefore, in plugging of DC motors, the connection to armature coils are reversed. The motor enclosure used in woodworking industry is a totally enclosed fan cool type. So basically you can see enclosed fan cool type means here they will have fan which is the fan which is uh, placed inside which is totally on the machine. So it is used for cooling purpose. The motor enclosure used in work, woodworking industry is totally enclosed fan cool tank means the fan is going to enclose totally in the motor itself so it can cool the kitchen and every part of that machine so therefore the motor enclosure used in woodworking industry is totally enclosed fan cool tank so enclosed fan cool tank is a very popular motor which is mostly used in the woodworking industries so therefore here enclosed fan cool tank is a motor it is basically used in the woodworking industry so therefore Simply we can say that the enclosed fan cool type is one of the is one of the important motor which is majorly used in the woodworking industry. So therefore enclosed fan cool type means the fan is always kept inside the motor itself. So therefore it can cool the each and every part inside the motor and it can give large amount of life. So the motor enclosure used in the woodworking industry is a totally enclosed fan cool type. The least expensive drive is called as the belt drive. So the belt drive which is very least expensive and compared to other things. The least expensive drive is always the belt drive. The least expensive drive is always the belt drive. The least expensive drive is nothing but which is the belt drive. The least expensive drive is also is always the belt drive. The least expensive drive is always the belt drive. So belt drive is one of the least expensive drive when compared to other drives. 
Rolling electrodes are specifically used for seam welding. So rolling electrodes are specifically used for the seam welding. So if you want to go for the seam welding, the rolling electrodes are always preferred. So if you go for the seam welding, always the rolling electrodes are always being preferred. So whenever you go for the seam welding, always the rolling electrodes are being always preferred. So, so rolling electrodes are so rolling electrodes are always preferred for seam welding. So the rolling electrodes are always preferred for the seam welding. In resistance furnace, the atmosphere is always oxidizing. So if you go for the resistance furnace, so whatever the atmosphere is going to present, then it is always oxidizing means it is always going to improve the temperature of the furnace to a higher value because it is oxidizing in nature. So in resistance furnace, the atmosphere is very oxidizing means basically it is going to increase the temperature more and more to a huge amount of value to make the substance uh, uh, come back to, uh, to melt in a very small amount of time. So therefore, so in resistance furnace, the atmosphere is always oxidizing in nature because we can melt the material in a very small amount of time with the help of this resistance furnace. Now in resistance furnace, the atmosphere is always oxidizing in nature. In core type furnace, the secondary winding has no tones. The secondary winding has no tones. So therefore, we can say in core type transfer, in the core type furnace, the type of furnace where secondary has no tones or you can say the secondary winding has no winding. So simply we can say there is no secondary tones. Simply we can say there is no secondary winding tones. So in a core type, in a core type furnace, the secondary winding has no tones. So in a core type furnace, the secondary winding has no tones. In a, especially in the core type furnace, there is there are no secondary tones. So simply we can say that in the core type furnace, the secondary winding has no tones. So in a core type furnace, secondary winding has no tones. So this is one of the important thing that these are the some of the important questions that are just being asked in the machines course. So therefore simply we can see that in core type furnace the secondary winding has no tones. So by placing the short shading coil at the slot cut around the smaller part of the pole. So simply we can say that here by placing a by placing a shading pole at the cold slot cut around the smaller part of the pole. So in a core type in a core type furnace the secondary winding has no tones. So by placing a shading coil at the slot cut around the smaller part of the pole. So, so this is very important. When in a quarter transfer, in a quarter furnace, the secondary winding has no tones. So in a quarter furnace, the secondary winding has no tones. Up to this, this is a question only up to here. Now we will go for the next one. Damper bars are used in synchronous machine. I have already told you this important point. Here, damper bars are always used in the synchronous machine and the rotor bars are used in the induction machine whereas the commuter are used in the basic machine. So damper bars are always used in the, used in the synchronous machine whereas the rotor bars are used in the induction machine and the commuter are used in the DC machine. I have already told you this important point which is the damper bars are always used in the synchronous machine whereas the rotor bars are always used in the induction machine whereas the commuter are always used in the DC machine. In a single phase induction motor, both the main winding and the auxiliary winding are placed on the stator. I have already told you in a single phase induction motor, both the main winding and the auxiliary winding are always placed on the stator because if you go for a purely single phase induction motor, the starting torque is equal to zero. So that is the reason we are going to keep an extra winding which is called as the auxiliary winding or starting winding in parallel with the main winding on the stator. So therefore, we are going to get the non-zero starting torque. So therefore, in a single phase induction motor, both the main winding and the auxiliary winding are, pl are placed on the stator. This auxiliary winding is used only for the starting purpose. After the rotor is reaching a certain speed, with the help of speed sensitive centrifugal switch, we can remove this auxiliary winding. Otherwise, the two windings are parallel, so overall resistance becomes less. So it draws huge amount of current and it is going to get burned away. Single alternator connected to infant bus bar supplies a local load. The change in excitation of the machine results in change in power factor. See, I already told you with the changing of excitation, when EF value can change, when the EF value is, is going to get changed, then definitely delta is going to get changed and also the power factor angle is also going to get changed. So therefore, then we, we can simply say that the power factor is also going to get changed. So whenever you change the excitation, EF is going to get changed, delta is going to get changed, then also we are going to change the power factor of the system also we are going to get change. So these are the changes that are going to occur whenever you change the excitation even the RF counter also are going to get change. So these are the things that are always going to get change. Listen carefully. The F is going to get change. IA is going to get change. Power factor is going to get change. Delta is also going to get change. So these are the things that are going to get change whenever you change the excitation. So when a single alternator connected to infant bus bar supplies a local load 
the change in excitation of the machine results in change of power factor. These things I already told you. Whenever you change the excitation, EF is going to get changed, IA is going to get changed, power factor is going to get changed, and also also going to get changed. Excitation means simply you are going to change the field current. In a three phase induction motor, starting winding produces a rotating magnetic field. I already told you in a three phase induction motor, the stator winding always produces a rotating magnetic field. These things I already told you. In a three phase induction motor, the stator winding it is always going to produce a rotating magnetic field with a speed which is ns is called a circular speed is equal to 120 by p. I already told these important concepts in the three phase induction motors are always because three phase induction motor is a self starting motor. The phase sequence of a three phase alternator is R by B. On reversing the direction of its field current, the phase sequence is again R by B. I have already told you. See, whenever you change the, whenever you change the supply of the field current, so whenever you change the DC supply of the field current, again you will get the same phase sequence, which is again R by B. The phase sequence of a three phase alternator is R by B. On reversing the direction of its field current, the phase sequence is again R by B. I have already told you. If you change the DC supply polarity of the field winding, the field current is going to get reverse direction. The north and south pole induced on the motor are going to get changed, but still you are going to get the same phase sequence R by B. So if you want to change the phase sequence of the supply, just you have to just you have to rotate that rotor in the reverse direction. You have to rotate in the reverse direction. Suppose in the clockwise, if you are going to rotate, you are going to get R by B. Then do your rotation in the reverse fashion. Then you are going to get R B by. So like this, you have to do this one, but not by just changing the DC supply to the field winding. So you have to change the rotation of the rotor. Then only you are going to change the phase sequence. The phase sequence of a three phase alternator is R B. On reversing the direction of its field current, the phase sequence is still the same. This again R by B. The three phase induction motor cannot run at synchronous speed. If it is did so. The relative speed between the, rota ro the rotating flux and the rotor circuit and the torque developed will be zero. The three-phase induction motor cannot run at synchronous speed. If it did so, the relative speed between the rotating flux and the rotor circuit zero and the torque developed will be zero. So therefore, I already told you. See, whenever a lens flow is always going to tell you, the effect is always going to oppose the cause. But here, the rotor cannot be as equal to N S. See. Whenever the rotor is equal to ns, what is going to happen? I already told you. Whenever the rotor speed is equal to synchronous speed, the slip is equal to zero. I already told you the general expression. The general expression of a torque, which is 180 by 2 pi ns into s e2 square r2 by r2 square plus s x2 whole square. If you substitute s is equal to zero, the torque is equal to zero. So therefore, whatever the torque we are going to get at that is equal to zero. So therefore, whenever the nr is equal to ns, slip is equal to zero. So torque is equal to zero because there is no need to Speed difference between them. The three-phase induction motor cannot run at the synchronous speed. If it did so, the relative speed between the rotating flux and the rotor circuit will be zero, and the torque developed will be equal to zero. A three-phase induction motor is operating at slip yes. If the two supply leads are interchanged, then its slip at that instant will be two minus s. I already told you. Here, suppose if you change into supply terminals, the supply the speed, the RMF is going to rotate in the reverse direction. So therefore, simply we can say the slip is nothing but black slip. Black slip is equal to which is two minus forward slip. So therefore, a three-phase induction motor is operating at a forward slip of yes. If the two phase, the two supply layers are interchanged, the RMF is going to get in the reverse fashion. Then its a slip at that instant will be the black slip is equal to two minus forward slip, which is two minus yes. In a shear pole motor, the phase splitting is achieved. In a two phase, in a shear pole motor, the phase splitting is achieved. By placing a shaded coil at the slot, cut around the smaller part of the pole. See, basically the pole we are going to cut into a bigger part and a smaller part. On the smaller part, we are going to keep this shading coil in a shaded pole single phase induction motor. So in a shaded pole single phase induction motor, the phase splitting is achieved by placing a sh shading coil at the slot, cut around the smaller part of the pole. I already told you the pole we are going to cut into two parts. One is of big size. And the other is of a small size. On the small size, we are going to keep this shading coil. So therefore, always in a shaded pole induction motor, the rotor is always going to rotate from unshaded portion to the shaded portion. These things I already told you. So therefore, always the flux in the shading portion is always going to lag when compared to unshaded region. Because as there is a shading coil or co copper coil, it is going to make the things very come slower. So therefore, whatever the flux in the shading coil is always going to lag the 
the flux in the unshaded part. So therefore, in a shaded pole model, the phase fitting is achieved by placing a shading coil at the slot cut around the smaller part of the pole. These things I have already told you. In, a, in an auto transformer, the inductive power transfer is equal to the inductive power transfer is equal to 1 minus k into input power. Where k is nothing but it is a ratio of the it is a ratio of the low voltage of the auto transformer by high voltage of the auto transformer. So k is always less than or equal to 1. And the connective power transfer is equal to k into pn because if we addition of all these two things we are going to get again input power is equal to output power. So therefore simply we can say k is always less than or equal to 1. Where k is the ratio of the low voltage of the auto transformer by high voltage of the auto transformer. So in an auto transformer the inductive power transfer is equal to 1 minus k into input power or output power. And the connective power transfer is equal to input power minus this value which is equal to k into pin. When a slippery induction motor runs at a super synchronous speed, then it will work as induction generator. That means voltage is injected in the rotor circuit in phase opposition to the rotor induced EMF. When a slippery induction motor runs at a super synchronous speed, then it works as an induction generator. That means the voltage is injected in the rotor circuit in phase opposition to the rotor induced EMF. See, whenever the NR is greater than EMS, then this slippery induction motor is going to act like a induction generator. Then definitely whatever the EMF injected in this rotor circuit is in opposition phase with respect to rotor induced EMF. So therefore simply means that when a slipping induction motor runs at a super synchronous speed, then it is going to work as an induction generator. That means that whatever the voltage which is injected in the rotor circuit is phase opposition to the rotor induced EMF. So this is a very important point. So when slipping induction motor runs at a super synchronous speed, then it will work as an induction generator. That means whatever the voltage which is injected in the rotor circuit is a phase opposition to the rotor induced EMF. Suppose if it is going to act like a generator, then definitely whatever the injected voltage and the rotor induced EMF, both are opposition in phase. This is what I am trying to tell you. So therefore, whenever it is going to act like a generator, the induced voltage in the rotor and the voltage in injected in the rotor circuit, both are anti-phase or we can say phase opposition. So when slippering induction motor runs at a super synchronous speed, then it, it will work as an induction generator. That means the voltage is injected in the rotor circuit in phase opposition to the rotor induced EMF. So whenever the NR is greater than NS, the slippering induction motor is going to act like an induction generator. So therefore simply we can see that whatever the voltage injected in the rotor circuit is in phase opposition to the rotor induced EMF. There is a one percentage of heated power core, core loss in a high frequency ferrite core transformer used in SMBS power supply. There is a one percentage of heated power core loss in high frequency ferrite core transformer used in SMBS power supply. So basically in the switched mode power supply, we are going to use a ferrite core. Here we, we go for the high frequency applications. Then there is only one percentage of heated power is lost in the core losses. So basically in the SMPS, we are going to use a ferrite core transformer. For high frequency applications, we are going to use this ferrite, tra ferrite core transformer. In this, only one percentage of rated power is in the terms of the core loss. So there is a one percentage of rated power core loss in the high frequency ferrite core transformer used in SMPS power supply. So there is a one percentage of rated power core loss in high frequency ferrite core transformer used in switch mode power supply power supply. So therefore, there is a one percentage of rated power core loss in a high frequency ferrite core transformer used in SMBS power supply. I have already told you, in a switched mode power supply, we are going to use a ferrite core transformer for high frequency applications in that only one percentage of the rated power is uh, in the losses of the core loss. It is in the term of the loss of core loss. To deliver power by silent pole synchronous generator, the power angle of the generator Relative to the input bus, voltage difference should be less than 90 degree. To deliver the power by silent pole synchronous generator, deliver the power by silent pole synchronous generator, the power angle of the generator relative to the infinite bus bar reference should be less than 90 degree. So therefore, simply we can say that the power angle is also called as a torque angle, which is the delta, which is the angle between the EF and B. The, this value should be less than 90 degree. Then only it can deliver the power. So, the, it can act like a synchronous generator. I have already told you in a synchronous generator, always the magnitude of EF is always given the magnitude of V or simply EF is always going to lead the V. Whereas in a synchronous motor, 
always the mangrove bees always get the amount of E and always the is going to always lead the EF. In case of synchronous motor, I only thrown simple in points. To deliver the power by seven pole synchronous generator, the power angle or the torque angle of the generator relative to the infant bus voltage difference should be less than 90 degree. Whenever belt is called as the power angle or torque angle, it is the angle between the V and EF. V is called as the bus bar voltage and EF is the induced EMF. This voltage difference should be always less than 90 if we want to deliver the power by silent pole synchronous generator. I have already told you one important point. The starting torque. The starting torque is the proportional to which is I have already told you. See, torque is nothing but I have already P is equal to T into omega. So, P is equal to P by omega. Here, P is called as the rotor power input. Rotor power input is nothing but simply we can say the rotor copper loss by yes. So, if the rotor copper loss is nothing but 3 into I2 square R2 by Yes, so therefore finally you are going to get T is equal to 1 by omega into 3 into I2 square R2 by Yes. So if you take all the remaining proportional constant, finally you are going to get the torque is the ideal proportion to I2 square by Yes. So I2 square by Yes. So if you want starting torque, the slipper starting torque is equal to 1 and if you want full torque, then you have to use the full load slip. So therefore TST by SFL is equal to the starting torque by the starting current by full load current whole square into full load slip by starting slip. Starting slip is equal to 1. So therefore you have to get here full load slip. So therefore simply the ratio of starting torque by full load torque is equal to slip at full load into starting current by full load current whole square. These are the rotor currents. These are the rotor currents. So I2 ST is called as the, the starting current of induction motor or simply the, the starting current in the rotor of the induction motor. IDLF is called as the full load current of induction motor and SFL is called as the slip at the full load. So basically I2 means it is in the, it is reference to the rotor part. The, the starting current in the rotor part and FL is called as the, the start, the, uh, the full load current in the rotor part and SFL is called as the slip at the full load. So these are the formula that you always have to remember. The ratio of the starting torque by full load torque is equal to the starting current by full load current also going to slip at full load by slip at starting torque. The slipper standard is equal to 1. So, therefore, here you are going to get here SFL by 1. So, this is the form that you always have to remember. TST is called starting torque. TLF is means full load torque. And IDST is means the starting current in the induction motor. IDFL is called as the full load current in the induction motor. SFL means the slip at the full load. So, this is basically induction motor. So, this is called the rotor input torque. You can simply call it as rotor input torque, stator output torque, air gap power. And this is the rotor copper loss. is equal to slip times the rotor input or air gap power or the steady output and this is called the mechanical output it is a input minus this losses which is if you do the this minus this one we are going to get 1 minus s into the rotor input or air gap power or steady output so you can go for any of these things so this pri is called as the rotor power input and prc is called as the rotor copper loss and p mechanical output is called as the mechanical output power developed by the rotor to shaft so this is called as a mechanical output power denoted by the rotor to the shaft. So if you want the ratio of this, this by this one, if the ratio of these two things, then we are going to get this by 1 minus s. You can see clearly. So this is called as the rotor power input and this is rotor copper loss and this is called as the mechanical output power denoted by rotor to shaft. So mechanical output power denoted by the rotor to the shaft. So basically suppose in a 3 wheel induction motor, there is a torque T1 and slip S1. There is a maximum torque Tm as slip M1. Then what is the this ratio? Then Tm T1 by Tm is nothing but 2 into S1 into Sm by S1 square plus Sm square. It is always the true formula. So therefore T1 can be any general torque at any general slip. So let me assume I want to find what is the starting torque. Let me assume T1 is nothing but starting torque. Then what are the slip in the starting is nothing but equal to uh, and starting in N1 is equal to 0. So slip is equal to 1. So you have to substitute S1 by 1 and T1 by T starting torque. You are going to get like this. Starting torque by maximum torque is equal to 2 into 1 into SM is 2 SM by 1 square plus SM square means 1 plus SM square. So this is the equation that you are going to get if you replace T1 by starting torque and S1 by starting slip is equal to 1. So you can go for anything. Suppose if I take T1 as a full load and S1 as a slip at full load, then you can replace T1 by T full load and S1 by slip full load then you are going to get the equation like this. So you can, go, this is a basic general equation. So torque T1 at slip S1 and maximum torque at slip maximum slip. So therefore at the slip at maximum torque, then here we are going to get T1 by Tm is equal to 
clean to SRM to SRM by SRM square plus SRM square. So this is the equation that you always have to remember. You can replace T1 by starting torque and get full load torque. You can, you can use anything and use the corresponding slip. You are going to get the equation for whatever you want to figure out. SRM is called as a slip at maximum torque. See, efficiency is nothing but output shaft power by input power. So, efficiency is nothing but output shaft power by input power. So, therefore, for a, basically, I am trying to tell you regarding the induction generator. So, efficiency is nothing but output shaft power by input, P shaft power by P input power. So, now, shaft power is equal to, what is the shaft power? Input power minus stator losses minus rotor copper loss minus frictional windage losses. Means you can see clearly, the shaft power is nothing but input power minus losses. What are the losses? So, all PHC is a... Shaft power is also called as the output power. So, output power is nothing but input power minus losses. Losses are shaded losses. Means, shader losses means shader copper loss and shader core loss. These are rotor copper loss only because rotor core loss are negative. Only rotor copper loss you have to take here. And here it is a frictional vintage losses. So, output power and shaft power is equal to input power minus shader loss minus rotor copper loss and vintage and friction losses. I already told you the rotor copper loss is equal to slip times the slip times the rotor input which is Slip times the input power minus shutter loss is nothing but rotor input. So, therefore, slip times the rotor input. Rotor input is also called as the input power minus shutter losses. So, therefore, efficiency is nothing but output shaft power by input power or simply output power by input power or simply you can say shaft power by input power or simply output shaft power by input power. So, shaft output power is nothing but simply input power minus losses. Shader losses minus rotor copper loss minus friction and windage losses. And the rotor copper loss is equal to slip times the rotor input. Rotor input you can get which is input power minus shader losses. Screwing of rotor slots in a three phase induction motor reduces the slot harmonics. By screwing the rotor slots, the rotor slots and the stator slots will be parallel and there will be additional leakage reactance. Ski, screwing of rotor slots in three phase induction motor reduces the slot harmonics. By screwing the rotor slots to rotor slots, by screwing the rotor slots, the rotor slots and shutter slots will be parallel and there will be additional leakage reactance. So basically what, is the, what I am trying to tell you is, if you screw the rotor slots in a three-phase induction motor, the slot harmonics have been reduced. By screwing the rotor slots, the rotor slots and the stator slots will be parallel and there will be additional leakage reactance also. I have already told you, by screwing the ro rotor slots, we can remove the crawling and cogging, but efficiency will decrease. We can prevent the crawling and cogging, but the efficiency will decrease. These things I have already told you. So, screwing of rotor slots in a three-phase induction motor reduces the slot harmonics, so therefore crawling and cogging are removed, but by screwing the rotor slots, the rotor slots and the stator slots will be parallel and there will be additional leakage reactance. In a double cage induction motor, the two rotor cages can be considered to be in parallel. This Double cage is used for obtaining high starting torque at the low starting current. So, therefore, in a double cage induction motor, the two rotor cages can be considered to be in parallel. This double cage is used for the obtaining the high starting torque at the low starting current. I have already told you basically, double cage induction motor has the two cages. One is called as the outer cage induction motor and the other is the inner cage induction motor. If you take the outer cage, the area is very lesser like a circular fashion, whereas the inner cage will be area is higher, like a rectangular fashion. So, area is lesser means the resistance is very high. So, therefore, the side torque of the outer cage induction motor is very higher when compared to the side torque of the inner cage. So, starting torque is very higher means area is lesser means the resistance is higher. So, torque is higher and the current is also very less at the starting condition. So, therefore, there is a meaning of this one. In the double cage induction motor, the two rotor cages can be considered to be in parallel, means the outer cage and the inner cage we can consider to be in parallel. This double cage is used for obtaining the high starting torque because outer cage has the small amount of area, so high resistance, so low starting current. So therefore high starting torque at the low starting current. A three-phase field cage induction motor is considered by means of a star delta switch. What is the starting current of the motor? So I have already told you a three-phase field cage induction motor, a three-phase, a three-phase Skilled cage induction motor is constructed by means of a star delta switch. What is the starting point of the motor? I have already told you, if you use the st by star delta starter, the starting current is nothing but which is 1 by 3 times the, the starting current with respect to direct online. So therefore, for comparing the starting current of motor generally, take on the line side but not motor side. So therefore, it is constructed on the motor side 1 by root 3 times the 
stronger with the time the current with the direct online will be correct. So therefore, a three-phase leakage induction motor is constructed by means of a star delta switch. What is the starting current of the motor? I have already told you the starting current with respect to star delta is equal to 1 by 3 times the starting current with respect to direct online. So therefore, for comparing of starting current of motor, generally taken on the line side, not on the motor side. If it is considered on motor side, 1 by root 3 times the current with direct online will be correct. Here actually it has to be 1 by 3. So due to heating, oxidation of transformer oil will take place and the sludge will form in the transformer oil. So due to heating, oxidation of transformer oil will take place and the sludge will form in the transformer oil. So basically if the windings are going to get heated, so because of this heat, the transformer oil is going to get oxidation. So therefore, the sludge is going to get formed in the transformer oil. So therefore, if the burden of the transformer oil is being oxidized, for a large amount of time, the sludge is going to get formed. So therefore, due to heating, oxidation of the transformer oil will take place and the sludge is being formed in the transformer oil. So whenever the transformer oil is being oxidized for a large amount of time, definitely the sludge, the sludge is going to get formed in the transformer oil. So due to heating, the oxidation of transformer oil will take place and the sludge will form in the transformer oil. I have already told you, this is class is equal to kh into b into the power of x into f into volume of core and B max is the data proportional to voltage by frequency. So if you substitute here, we are going to get finally, the ECS law is equal to KH into here F to the power of 1 minus X into V to the power of X. So if you take minus here common, we are going to get PH is equal to KH into V to the power of minus of X minus 1 into V to the power of X. The radical class is equal to K into B square, B M square into F square into P is equal to K into B M square F square into T square. So we can say so, P is equal to K into B M square F square into T square. A L should be T square. So, P is nothing but if you substitute B M is that a proportional voltage by frequency, then if you substitute M, we are going to get V square. So, as the V decreases, then P also decreases. As the voltage decreases, V decreases is also decreases. So, here, if you see clearly, suppose if the frequency decreases, then we can see if the frequency decreases, then what is going to happen? It is X is equal to 1.6 minus 1 is, 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 is nothing but 0.6. So there is a minus 0.6. So V to the power of 1.6 by F to the power of 0.6. As F increases, the denominator will increase. So overall value will decrease. So as F increases, the denominator will increase. So overall value will decrease. So as frequency increases, so as frequency increases, the denominator value will increase. So pH will decrease. But if you go for the reverse process, if the frequency decreases, the denominator value decreases. So overall value will increase. Similarly of V decreases. If V decreases, its overall value will decrease. If V increases, its overall value will increase. So finally, I can say that here V to the power of X by F to the power of X minus 1. So therefore, X is equal to 1.6. So now the frequency decreases, the denominator value decreases, so overall value will increase. Similarly, if frequency increases, the denominator value will increase, so overall value will decrease. Similarly, if the V decreases, pH decreases. If V increases, pH increases. If B, H, if B increases, pH increases. If B decreases, pH decreases. This you can see clearly from this one. So a small correction here, it is T square. I also T square because P is equal to K into P M square into F square into T square. So if you replace B M by V by F, so F square square cancels, we are going to get finally K into V square into T square. So cores of large power transformers are made from cold rolled green oriented steel to increase the relative permeability because CR2 has the huge amount of permeability so therefore the latency is very less. So if you want to go for the large power transformers there we are going to use the material which is CR0 to make the core transformer. So therefore the cores of large power transformers are made from the CR0 simply we call it as the cold rolled grain oriented because it has the huge amount of permeability because because of this reason only the reluctance is equal to ideally zero. So this is preferred there. So therefore simply we can say that the cold rolled grain oriented steel is the preferred for large power transformers because they have the highest amount of relative permeability. So therefore the reluctance is ideally zero. The center branch parameter that is shunt resistance can be obtained by no load test which is representative of the core losses only in the induction motor. The shunt branch parameter that is the shunt resistance can be obtained by no load test which is the representative of the core losses only in the induction motor. I already told you the open circuit test, the open circuit test in transformer is equal to the no load test in induction motor. Similarly, 
the short circuit testing transformer is equal to the block rotor test in the induction motor or induction machine. So therefore simply with the help of molar test on the induction machine, we are going to find the center branch parameter especially the RC value. So therefore the center branch parameter that is the shunt resistance can be obtained by molar test which is the representative of the core losses only in an induction motor. The shunt branch parameter that is called as the shunt resistance can be obtained by molar test which is a representative of the core losses only in an induction motor. The shunt branch parameter that is the shunt resistance can be obtained by no load test which is a representative of the core losses only in an induction motor. A capacitor start single phase induction motor has high starting torque and, it's, and it is used for those loads which are hard to start. I have already told you with the help of starting capacitor we are going to increase the phase angle between the the starting current and the main winding current or simply the auxiliary current current and the main winding current. So, so I already told you the starting torque is generally proportional to IM into IA into sin of alpha or alpha is the phase angle between the IM and IA. If alpha increases then IA then sin alpha increases then starting torque increases. So therefore simply we can say that with the help of starting capacitor we are going to increase the phase angle between the IM and IA. So therefore as alpha increases sin alpha increases so starting torque is also increases. So a capacitor starts in reverse induction motor as high starting torque and is used for those loads which are hard to start. So suppose if there are some rotor is initial torque is very less. So if you want to rotate it just use the capacitor. So therefore it is going to increase the phase angle between the IM and IA, IM and I, IW, I, IM and IA. So therefore as alpha increases the sign alpha increases so therefore the starting torque is also increases. Always starting torque is always that proportional to x into v one square x is always less than or equal to 1 for auto transformers. For auto transformers we are going to use the like with the help of tapping we are going to decrease the per phase voltage. So therefore the starting torque is either proportional to x into v whole square for auto transformer. So always x is always less than or equal to 1. The conditions to be satisfied for alternator to be synchronized with an incoming alternator is equal voltage, equal frequency, same phase sequence but not necessarily the same power rating. See, this is the necessary conditions for the alternators if you go for the parallel operation, which is they should have the same frequency, they should have the same voltage, they should have the same, same phase sequence, but not necessarily same power rating. See, power rating is not all our consideration. See, if they both have this power rating, same or not, that is not our agenda, but they should have same equal voltage, same equal frequency and same phase sequence. This is the thing that we always need to have. We are independent of power rating. We don't consider the power rating of the machines. It can be same or it can be different. It is not going to affect the parallel operation. So therefore, the conditions to be satisfied for alternator to be synchronized with an incoming alternator is equal voltage, equal frequency and the same phase sequence but not necessarily the same power rating. I have already told you here, if you want to synchronize two incoming alternators, they should have same voltage, they should have same frequency, they should have same phase sequence but not necessarily the same power rating. Power rating can, can be anything which can be same or not. It is not our agenda because by that it is not going to affect the synchronism between the alternators. The speed control techniques of DC series motors are the, the speed control techniques of DC series motor are the field diverter, armature diverter, curved field winding, parallel winding, armature resistance, voltage control. So motors in series or motors in parallel. So these are the ways that which we can go for the speed control techniques of DC series motor. So simply we can say that the speed control techniques of DC series motors are called as the field diverter, armature diverter, tapped field winding, parallel winding, armature resistance control, voltage control, motors in series or motors in parallel. So these are the methods by which we can control the DC series motor speed. The speed control techniques of DC series motor are the Field diverter, armature diverter, tapped field winding, parallel winding, armature resistance control, voltage control, motors in series or motors in parallel. So I have already told you, whenever the speed is lying from 0 to rated speed, by armature resistance control and the, and the armature voltage control, which is RA. Armature resistance means changing RA, armature voltage means changing the supply voltage V. So whether you go for the armature resistance control or whether you go for the armature voltage control, always you are going to get a speed which is below the rated speed or base speed. If you want the speed above the base speed which is from rated speed to above base speed, above speed, by using the field measuring control. So therefore simply you can say that if you want the speed below the rated speed, 
we have two measures one is called as the armature resistance control and the armature voltage control if you want above base speed there is only one method which is called as the feed weakening control three point starter and four point starter are used for both dc shunt motor and the dc compound motor so three point starter and four point starter are used for both dc shunt motor and dc compound motor so i want to tell you why the why we need a help of starter because at the initial condition the current is very higher so why the vines are going to get damaged so because of this we need the starters three point starter and four point starter are used for both dc shunt motor and also dc compound motor for as the two point starter is used only for dc series motors only two point starter is used for only dc series motor so very important point two three, three point starter and four point starter are used for both dc shunt motor and dc compound motor whereas the two point starter is used only for the dc series motor only three point starter is not suitable for feed flux control in the dc shunt motor because if we keep if we keep resistance in series with field winding as if decreases whole coil magnet may not have strength to attract drop so we go for four point starter because now if is independent of the volume coil i already told you here with the help of three point starter we can't use the we can't use the we can't go for the field weakening control so because of this we go for the four point starter the three point starter we can't get the field weakening control so because of this only we go for the four point starter method so three point starter is not suitable for field flux control in dc shunt motor because if we key resistance in series with the field winding as if decreases hold on coil magnet may not have strength to attract the rod so we go for the four point starter because now if is independent of the hold on coil so here in the three point starter suppose if you want to go for field weakening control you have to keep the resistance in series with the field winding so therefore if decreases so this coil this this varies in series with the hold on coil magnet as if decreases the hold on coil may not have strength to attract the rod so therefore simply we can say so because we can't go for this field weakening control by three point starter so that is the reason we go for the four point control now this uh, field winding is independent of the this hold on coil and this one is both are independent of each other so there is no dependency of both so now we can go for the four point starter so therefore simply a three point starter is not suitable for field flux control in dc shunt motor because if we keep resistance in series with the field winding as i have decreases hold coil magnet may not have strength to attract rod so we go for four point starter because now if is independent of the hold on coil that is the proportion to flux into armature current by reversing phi or ia we can reverse torque in order to stop the motor in less time so just to reverse the phi or just to reverse the ia anyone then definitely torque is negative so we can keep the motor to come stop in a very small amount of time but practically only reversing ia is preferred by using braking plugging region to braking we can stop the motor so practically we go for only reversing ia but not the reversing phi because practically only the reversing phi ia is more possible but ideally both are possible but practically only reversing ia is very much possible so now the braking methods are the braking method the the methods to stop stop the motor in less time are the braking method plugging method and regenerative braking when we can stop the motor in a very less time So torque is either proportional to flux into armature current. By reversing phi or ia, we can reverse the torque in order to stop the motor in less time. But practically only reversing ia is preferred. By using the methods like braking, plugging, and regenerative braking, we can stop the motor in less time. So the methods to stop the motor in less time are the braking method, plugging method, and regenerative braking. So therefore, torque is either proportional to flux into armature current. So by reversing phi or ia, we can reverse the torque in order to stop the motor in less time. But practically only Reversing ia is only preferred by using braking, plugging, reverse, regenerative braking. We can stop the motor in less time. In plugging process, when the speed comes to zero, just remove the supply. I already told you. In plugging process, we need to interchange the terminals of the armature. So therefore, the current ia is negative. So simply we can say torque is negative. So the torque is in the reverse fashion. So whenever the motor is going to come stop. just we need to open the supply otherwise the motor is going to rotate in the reverse direction for flat amount of time so when the speed is zero just we have to remove the supply in the case of plugging process in the plugging process in regenerative braking eb is either proportional to flux into speed during hill down hill down means suppose if a train is coming a hill down from up to bottom so therefore more speed eb is very so speed is very very higher in that case eb may be greater than supply voltage So it is going to act like generator. So as I is the negative, so torque is also negative. So now speed or control of speed happens. 
So now speed or control of speed happens. This method is not intentional grazing and this does not stop the motor. It is inherent property if motor is subject to overhauling load situations. If the speed is increased to make EB greater than V, then IA is negative. So if the speed is increased to make EB greater than V, then IA is reversed and the motor supply current acts as a generator. The motor supply current acts as a generator. There is a negative torque which controls the acceleration. This is advantageous in the mountain railways. So we can say that simple, what I am trying to say is very simple. In the regenerative braking, what is going to happen is very simple. Let me explain here. In the regenerative braking, I have already told you, EV is at the proportion to flux into speed. So during hill down, see, whenever the train is coming from up to bottom, so speed is very higher, you, you can get EV greater than V. So whenever EV is greater than V, the IA is going to flow from EV to V. So therefore current IA is negative. So it is going to act like a generator. So IA is a negative. So therefore, so IA torque is also negative. So now speed or control of speed happens. So now we are going to control the speed because automatically a control of speed is going to get happen because negative torque is going to occur there. So this method is not intentional. So this method is not intentional braking and it is and it does not stop the motor. It is inherent property if motor is subject to overall load conditions. The speed increased to make E B greater than V, then IA is reversed and the motor supply current acts as a generator. So therefore, there is a negative torque which controls the acceleration. This is advantage in the motor railways. So the rotor means whenever the motor is coming from up to down, the speed will be very higher. So E B is greater than V. So current is a negative, so torque is negative. So negative torque is going to control the speed. Speed want to go more and more, but this, because of this torque, the speed will not go further and further. The, this is called as intentional, it is not a intentional braking, this is, it is coming by nature itself. So therefore, it is very advantageous because without applying brakes, you are getting automatically the brake. Even you are not applying any brake, the you are going to get, like automatically you are going to get, even if you are not doing anything. If you, even, even if you are not pressing any brakes, still you are going to get by automatically by the nature. So this is very advantageous for the mountain railways. So in regenerative, in a regenerative braking, in the regenerative to flux into speed. During hill down station, if the speed is very higher, then you, you can get even than B. So it is going to act like a generator. So I is negative, so torque is negative. So now speed or control of speed is going to get happen. This method is not intentional braking and it is does not stop the motor. It is inherent property if the motor is subject to all, all in both situations. The speed increased to make even than B then IA is reversed and the motor supply current acts as a generator. There is a negative torque which controls the acceleration which is advantage in normal tiredness. This water, the negative torque, it will never stop the motor. It will only bring back that high speed to a normal speed. But it will, it will never make the speed to zero. It will only, it will try to decrease it, but it will never make zero. That is the important thing that you always have to understand. Regenerative braking won't happen in DC series motor because as I is negative, so flux is also negative because whenever a current is negative, this negative current is, is always going to give negative flux. So both are negative means still the torque is positive. So therefore we can say that regenerative braking won't happen in DC series motor because whenever the I is suppose suppose if E B is very higher, if suppose speed is very higher, then E B is very higher than V. So current is negative, so flux is also negative. So no torque, so torque is again positive, then the speed will go in the same direction again and again and again. So then we have to apply the brakes to stop it. Then you can see clearly, as the torque is in the same rotation, so speed will increase further and further. So therefore simply, it is acting like a DC, it is, it is going to act like a generator because current is negative, it is going to supply the power to the, this, this water the back end if it is going to supply the motor to the battery. But still, the speed is very higher, so we have to apply the brakes to stop it. There is no there is no unintentional braking. Then the nature is not giving any brake here. Then you have to apply the brakes to stop this one. Because in this service motor, you have to externally apply this one to brakes to stop this one because torque is always in the whatever the torque is coming it is always in the post direction itself. So regenerative braking won't happen in this series motor because as I is the negative, suppose speed is very higher, then it is greater than B. I is negative, flux is also negative, so the product is also positive. So this torque will make that motor to, 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 to to rotate in the same direction in a very higher more and more and speed. So externally we should break it, the break the rotor to come to normal speed. So we have to apply the brakes externally to make the rotor to come in a very small speed. The braking of DC series motor is a pain in neck than DC shunt motor. See braking of DC shunt motor is very easier than braking of DC series motor. So we can simply say that 
the breaking of these serious motor is a very severe pain in the neck than the decent motor because you can easily break a decent motor but breaking of this serious motor is very severe is a pain in neck so that for simply we can say that the breaking of this serious motor is very it's a very severe pain in neck when compared to basic shunt motor because we can easily break down the basic shunt motor when compared to basic series motor. At higher loads, a cumulative compound DC motor has higher torque than a shunt motor. I have already told this point in the graphs. You can see clearly in the graphs there. At higher loads means you know the current I is very higher. I have already shown the graphs with respect to torque speed, torque and the armature current graphs for different Top, if you draw the graphs between the torque and armature current for different generators or different motors, for different motors you can see clearly there at higher loads means at large amount of current IA, a cumulative compound DC motor has high torque than a shunt motor. These things I have already told you. So therefore simply we can say that that, that so a, cumulative, a cumulative compound DC motor has high torque than a shunt motor at the higher loads.